Uh, the chair declares uh, this hearing open. So magandang magandang umaga po uh, sa lahat ng mga kasama dito ngayong umaga. Uh, before we begin, um, may I just note that uh, Senator Nancy Binay is uh, on her way to our hearing para makapag-constitute kaming dalawa ng uh, quorum para sa hearing natin yon. Uh, the chair will do that uh, when Senator Nancy arrives. In the meantime, may I request our committee secretary uh, to please recognize the presence of our different resource persons this morning. Good morning, everyone. We would like to request our resource persons. From the Philippine Commission on Women, we have Ms. Kalin Sasuman, Supervising God Specialist, and Ms. Aurora San Juan, Senior God Specialist. From the Department of Education, we have Director General Jennifer Lopez, Bureau of Human Resource and Organizational Development. For the Department of Justice, we have Attorney Lorena Calo, State Counsel. For the Department of Health, we, we have uh, Ms. Frances Rose Elgo Mamaril. For the Department of National Defense, we have Major Berlin Bitoy, a Philippine Army, God Officer for the Office of the Assistant Secretary for Financial Management. For the Civil Service Commission, we have Attorney Maricar Mon Cancino. For the Commission on Human Rights, we have Commissioner Karen Gomez Dumpit. For the Armed Forces of the Philippines, we have Major Silvia Lina Gisaed, Philippine Army, and Colonel Agustin Matavia, the Judge Advocate General Service General Staff Corps. For the Philippine National Police, we have Police Major General Benigno Doranas Jr. and Police Colonel Emma Libunao. For the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission, we have Ms. Commissioner Greco Antonios Belhica and Attorney Balder Bringas. We also, from the local government units, we have uh, Ms. Magda Robinson, OIC Cebu United Rainbow, LGBT sector or CURLS. Uh, this is the, from the Cebu City and the Discrimination Commission. From the women's groups, we have Professor Tessa Divella, Miriam College Women and Gender Institute, Ms. Regina Rosero of Pride Hugs, Ms. Leslie Ampoan, exec, uh, from Galang Philippines Incorporated, we have Professor Natalie Lourdes Verceles, Director, UP Center for Women's and Gender Studies. From um, the health professionals, we have Ms. Mina Tenorio, Advocacy Coordinator of Likaan Center for Women's Health. From the religious groups, we have Mr. Lance de la Cruz, Catholics for Equality. Professor Eva Calweng, Chair, Department of Professional Education and President of Uni the University of the East Rainbow Catholics Philippines Incorporated. We have Sister Mary John Mananzan, St. Scholastica's College. Mr. Radim Morados, Mindanao Pride and um, Muslim LGBT. We have Pastor Carleen Nomorosa, National Council of Churches in the Philippines. We have Mr. Vaughn Alviar, uh, youth Representative of Iglesia Filipina Independiente. We also have Professor Revelation Velunta, Union Theological Seminary, and with Pastor Kakay Pamaran. From the United Methodist Church and Chair of Ewan Foundation, we have Bishop Solito Toquero. From the Coalition of Concerned Families of the Philippines, we have Attorney Lindon Kanya. From Intercessors for the Philippines, we have Pastor Agosto Co and Mr. Obed de la Cruz. For Filipinos for Life, we have Attorney Jean Luen Lumanta. For the Philippine Council for Evangelical Churches, we have Mr. Aldri Aldrin Penamora. For Pro Life Philippines, we have Mr. Ansel, Mr. Ansel uh, Beloso, Senior Member, Board of the Trustees. We have Ms. Queenie Bato. Ponong Raya, Bulacan State University, Bahaghari, Ms. Naomi Fontanos, President Ganda Filipinas, Lagablab LGBT Network. 
We have Nikki Castillo, Executive Director, Metro Manila Pride. We have Ms. Disney Aguila, President, Pinoy Def Rainbow Incorporated, together with Mr. Gemel Danao, Interpreter. For Inang Reina, F Polytechnic University of the Philippines, Casarian Lan, we have Ms. Mary Kyla Tibayan. For Rainbow Rights Project Incorporated, Attorney Jess Tamayo, Executive Director. For LGBTQ plus party list, we have Ms. Roy Galfo. We have Degdaupan UP Asian Center. We have Dr. Mira Ofreneo, uh, Tinay de Manila University, Loyola Schools Gender Hub. We also have uh, from the 700 Club Asia, Ms. Kata Inocencio and Attorney Winnie Salombides, Legal Counsel. We also have Pastor Stanley Clyde Flores uh, from the Jesus is Lord Church and Dr. Lou Mandalupe, CCFP. We also have Ms. Teresita Tinambunan and KJ Lorenzana. And from the group who formally subscribe and practice the homosexual lifestyle, we have Cesar Bendia, Anthony Roquel, and Yeshua Ben Layug. That's all, Madam Chair. Thank you, uh, Comsec. So just a brief uh, opening message, dear friends. So muli magandang umaga sa ating lahat. Let's talk. Let's talk. Marami ng mga haka-haka at mainit na diskusyon sa social media. Mabuti ng personal nating napag-uusapan at napapakinggan ang bawat isa. First thing I want to say is that we are here to work together. We are here to hear all sides to better the SOGI Equality Bill and to take into consideration religious and faith-based sensitivities. Nandito tayo ngayon para makinig sa isa't isa, unawain ang isa't isa, at maging bukas sa isa't isa. As chairperson, I'd like to preserve this committee as a safe space for everyone. Para sa mga religious groups at mga bagong resource persons, you are all welcome here. To our advocates who've been fighting discrimination for two decades now, at least, Listen and engage. To all our resource persons and to our guests in this room, let's remind ourselves of our unities, that we are all against any form of discrimination, that we want what is best for each other, and that we want to preserve our values and the Filipino family. Let's conduct ourselves with respect, empathy, and openness to one another. Bukas isip, Bukas puso. Ang mga sinasabi din pala natin online at sa hearing na ito, nababasa at napakikinggan ng mga anak natin, ng mga batang LGBT, ng mga individual na takot maging out. Are we speaking with the message that we want to tell them? Let's talk knowing our children are listening. May I ask this from all of you? from all of us. Salamat. So I see all of us nodding with our heads and with our hearts. Sa ganitong yugto, ay dinggin na po natin ang posisyon ng bawat isa. So I'd like to call by clusters of uh, resource uh, persons, uh, beginning with our uh, religious and faith-based groups, beginning with, yes, from the, I think I can read from here. Yes, from the Coalition of Concerned Families of the Philippines, uh, Attorney Lindon Kanya, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, we would like to enter into the records our profuse thanks for giving us a hearing uh, today. Um, this is the position of the Concer coalition of Concerned Families of the Philippines on the SOGI Bill. And uh, we have a delegation coming from uh, Davao uh, who are here and resource persons 
including persons who used to subscribe to and practice the homosexual lifestyle before. Uh, we have a representative from the Christian broadcasting sector, uh, a psychoanalyst, and uh, uh, and uh, okay. Uh, my my flicker is uh, okay. Ma uh, Madam Chair, we would like first to say that uh, we do not hate the LGBT community. We do not condone any form of bashing, bullying, or disrespect for them. We categorically state that they are human beings, they are persons. They are entitled to respect. And uh, having said that, we, however, have the strongest reservations or concerns or opposition to the uh, SOGI bill. And I hope that it will not be misconstrued as hatred for the LGBT community. As briefly and as quickly as we can state, we state the following grounds for our concern and opposition. Yes, please, Attorney, because may I also remind all resource persons here this morning, if we can stick to within three minutes, because we have to hear a lot of people. But proceed, Attorney uh, Lindo. Uh, wow. I, I'll do, I, I will have to be very fast. Uh, I'll, ju I'll just... Uh, also, may I recognize the presence of Attorney, Na uh, oh, I'm sorry, of Senator Nancy Binay, who was okay. also asking if we could have a copy of the presentation, Attorney Lyndon, okay. even after you present it. Please okay. proceed. Okay. Uh, as fast as uh, I can, Madam Chair, because the technical is uh, not cooperating with the presentation. Uh, our first point of, of, of concern is on the concept of the bill itself, on the scope and the title itself. Then we have very serious concerns on the specific provisions. First on the scope, um, the bill is entitled an act against anti-discrimination uh, anti on the basis of uh, SOGI. Immediately, Madam Chair, there is exclusion or non-mention of the other sector immediately affected by the bill. It is immediately a one-sided bill, which is supposed to be anti-discrimination. Um, second, the bill itself is based on feelings, Madam Chair. The title itself shows the nature of the basis for the proposed legislation. Sexual orientation, that is subjective. Gender identity, that is subjective versus later on rights that come from facts. So there is a contest here between facts and feelings. And we are very concerned that it appears that Sogi Bill, under Sogi Bill, facts will be defeated by feelings. Um, for example, the definition of gender identity. Uh, the proposed bill itself defines it as a personal sense. Personal, sayo lang, sense. It's not a fact, it's, it's a feeling, it's a disposition. Uh, among others, characterized by manner of clothing, inclinations, behavior, all subjective. And it goes on to say that a person may have male or female identity with the physiological characteristics of the opposite sex. Here, just by reading the plain text of the bill itself, see physiological fact, talo sa kay personal sense, because ang mangibabaw, yung personal sense which is subjective and is given more uh, premium than fact. Um, and um, we are very concerned that in this concept of the bill, where fact will yield to feelings, na criminalize pa yung mga maninindigan based on fact. For example, mag-insist uh, to a transgender woman, with all due respect, sir, my conscience tells me that you are really a man, no matter what medical procedure you went through. Sa Sogi Bill, patay siya, uh, Your Honor. Kasi uh, gender identity can overrule physiological characteristics. In fact, my, my uh, ruling dyan na the actual sex of the person in the sizing up of discrimination is not relevant, is not relevant to the determination of a, a whether a discriminatory act has been committed or not. 
So we, we say that uh, gender identity is not based on fact because there have been numerous studies that there is no gay gene and, and there is a recent study involving 470,000 volunteers made by a group of top-notch researchers and the conclusion is there is no such thing as a gay gene because it is all a complex interplay of experience, expectancy, peer environment, etc., etc. Very, very subjective. Contest to gender which is male, female, anatomically established, biologically established, physiologically established, but in a collision of viewpoints, mag yield si fact sa kay, kay feeling. And, and we find this uh, with all due and greatest respect, Madam Chair, nadidisturb po kami sa implication nito ng concept. Uh, so, gender is a biological, fi physiological fact. Gender identity is feeling. Sex as to whether male or female is fact. Sexual orientation is feeling. But in the hierarchy of values under Sogi Bill, talo si fact sa kay feeling. Um, in in uh, Section 3A, uh, in relation with Section 3C of all the bills here, uh, subject of the hearing, my direct declaration that the actual sex of the person concerned shall not be relevant for the purpose of determining whether an act of discrimination has been committed. Grabe po ito ang implication. I cannot point to a fact to say, excuse me, sir, you really still a male by my understanding, no matter what procedure went through, I'm, be, I'm basing my, my attitude towards you based on fact. But, but the bill says, no, the actual sex is not relevant. Delicado po ito, with all due and very great respect, Madam Chair, na, naninervyos po kami sa implication ito ng, uh, ng provision ng bill. And uh, the crime of discrimination is punished horrendously, horrendously, half a million, six to 12 years, by a person who will insist on fact versus a person who insists on a set of rights based on feelings? Grabe po, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, for example, classic illustration, the recent uh, case of uh, the mall incident. Nothing personal for the persons involved. But this is exhibit A of contest between fact and feeling. Kasi po, women are women. That's a fact. The toilet involved in the incident was a toilet for women. That is a fact. Now, here comes a man who became a woman without judicial order declaring her to have become a woman, just saying so that she is now a woman, insisting that she is entitled to access to the women's CR. And, and now, everybody for the bill is saying, ipas na ang sogi bill kasi kawawa ang transgender woman concerned. That to us is illustrative of the defeat of fact versus feeling that is uh, enshrined in the so SOGI bill. For example, if we call Representative Ger Geraldine Roman, the most famous transgender woman in the country, being a member of Congress, and we say, Congressman, sir, delicado kami sa stigma, Section 3F, delicado kami sa verbal harassment, Section 3J of the bill, kasi mag siya na iniinsulto siya hindi siya rinirespeto. And, and, and yung aming defense, uh, uh, Congressman, we are basing it on, on fact. Okay. Anong, anong fact dito? There is uh, a principle in criminal law that truth is a defense in libel. But in SOGI, hindi na magiging defense ang truth. Kasi ang bill itself nagsabi, the actual sex is not relevant to the determination of whether discrimination has been committed or not. Kasi mas mangibabaw ang personal sense of identity more than physiological characteristics. And uh, not even a Supreme Court decision will come to the rescue of the offender in the case, in the landmark case of Romel Jacinto Dante Silverio versus of the Republic of the Philippines. The Supreme Court defined a female and male based on a long history of jurisprudence. Female is the sex that produces ova or bears a young. Male is the sex that has organs to produce spermatozoa for fertilizing ova. 
Now, this is not my words. This is the word of the Supreme Court. The words male and female in everyday understanding do not include persons who have undergone sex reassignment. That is part of the law of the land, decision of the Supreme Court. Even if we cite that, patay kami pa rin sa sogi. Kasi hindi na importante yung truth by, by declared policy of, of the law. Uh, ito pa po sa Supreme Court decision na yan, uh, yung petition dito sa Silverio versus Republic of the Philippines is a petition for change of name based on change of gender. Uh, I, I'd like just to, to illustrate, Madam Chair, with, with your kindest indulgence, kasi very crucial na legal point ito. Sabi ng Supreme Court, a change of name based on a change of gender is not a right. It's not a right. It is a privilege that a court has to look into. There has got to be a judicial order. There is no mention of a judicial order for so in SOGI that will declare that a man has ceased to become a man and now has become a woman. Uh, the basis for this is the civil code provision that all entries in the civil register shall be corrected only by a judicial order. And ano yung mga entry? Under Attorney Lindon, if you could, sir, uh, could you wrap up within two minutes? Actually, we are already over three minutes anyway, but I'll give you two minutes more so that we can move on to our many other resource persons uh, as well. Thank you, sir. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, because lack of time, we, will, we, will, we are manifesting that we will submit a written uh, discussion of our points. But let, let me finish with the remaining time. Ma Attorney Kana, Madam Chair, baka pwede yes, makakuha na kami ng kopya. Sure, sure, sure. Para yes. kahit hindi pa ho natatapos yung presentation niyo, we could already go through it and ask you questions. Okay. Baka during the course of the hearing, eh, maitatanong ko na rin yung mga points na gusto niyong erase. Yes, yes. We, we will gladly do so. Okay. So, so, under Article 408 of the Civil Code, ang entry sa birth in relation to Act 3753, Civil Register Law, mentions the declaration of the sex of the person concerned. That is under, now, you cannot change it without a court order. Under SOGI, all you will insist on is your personal sense, personal, without judicial order. This is earth-shaking, Madam Chair, legally earth-shaking. And, and, uh, and, and the male and female uh, cannot just be uh, declared by a simple say-so. It has got to be a, a judicial process. So my implications of government records, my implications of peace and order, national security, what if a crime is committed by a male and then went through uh, the rights under SOGI, hindi na siya female, a reasonable doubt is created, dismiss ang case, kasi sabi ng witness male, e ngayon ang accused is female na siya. Oh, what is the implication with respect to women's rights versus transgender women's rights? What is the implication to the civil code and the family code? For example, the grounds for legal separation is lesbianism or homosexuality, sexual infidelity, or perversion. Oh, ngayon, rin recognize yung bisexual as gender identity. So a man will say, uh, honey, sorry ka na lang, you can only satisfy one half of my need because my other need is for men also. You're just a woman, but I am bisexual. Ano mangyari ngayon sa mundo nito kung, kung i-recognize na yung bisexuality? What Thank happens? you, Attorney Lindon. I'm sorry, we have to wrap up uh, for the first presentation so that we can hear also the many other resource persons. But may I reiterate the request of Senator Nancy to please provide the committee uh, your full presentation so that we, we may read it and also We submit your honor. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Thank you very much, Attorney Kanya. I'd like to recognize the presence uh, of uh, Senator Aimee Marcos. Thank you so much for joining the, the hearing. Uh, before I call on Ms. Kata, um, may I just uh, request, indeed, earth-shaking. I, I embrace the term, and I would say earth-shaking in a good way. Maybe difficult, but I would say the outcome we're striving for is uh, earth-shaking in a good way. Um, may I just reiterate to the committee, to the uh, friends all here present, that uh, let's keep the Committee of Women and Gender Identity, uh, Committee of Women and Gender Equality, uh, a safe space. So. Uh, let us please refer uh, to trans women as she or ma'am, uh, or at least and refrain from because there are there are trans women colleagues with us here present this morning, and uh, uh, try to restrain ourselves from calling them 
uh, he or sir or uh, or man. No? Uh, also, the I'm glad that Attorney uh, Kanya, you you referred to some um, grounds in current laws on the dissolution of marriage to include homosexuality and lesbianism. When these are actually uh, uh, grounds that are are not acceptable in a, in a gender. Uh, sensitive uh, legal framework. So thank you for uh, mentioning those and allowing me to to point uh, point that out. So we, as we continue the hearing, let us try to address the sources of disturbance and yung pagka nervios natin uh, from all points of the table and see what more common grounds, though painfully, though slowly, we may uh, try to carve out. Madam so Chair, yes, uh, Senator Nancy. Can I just Nancy. A point lang dun sa reminder niya? Siguro since we're hearing the other side. Let us also not impose on, <laughs> if their belief is to call them as Mr. or Miss, let us, kung pakiusap ko lang din sa committee, na, wag din naman natin i-impose sa kanila yung belief ng chair. <laughs> um, just, uh, um, just to be fair, because we already gave them their time during the last hearing. Siguro, let us give them their time naman if, Kung yung belief nila, they should be called uh, Mr. or Miss, payagan naman natin. I submit to the... Thank you. The chair here, Senator Nancy. Um, siguro mag-extra effort lang tayo kasi speaking also personally, nakakasakit lang kasi sa ilang mga kasama natin. In the same way na I would not like to be called Mr. or Sir. Yun lang po, if there's a way we can find na without, if, if we cannot bring ourselves to call them the terms that they are requesting us to call them, at least not to call them the terms that really cause them hurt. Uh, and again, I reiterate that the chair here, Senator Nancy, no imposition is uh, intended. I am requesting us lang to exert extra effort, at least not to uh, inflict emotional pain, at least during this hearing. Kasi ma ma marami naman at matagal naman silang mga karanasan na ganun eh. Natatawag na mga termino na pa pakiramdam nila ay hindi sila. But as I said, uh, thank you to Senator Nancy. And no imposition intended. Just that request. So, let us move on please to the uh, resource person. Uh, will it be Ms. Gata or Attorney Salumides? From the 700 Club Asia, Ms. Gata, Inocencio. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. And thank you, Paul, and uh, Senator uh, Marcos also, and Senator Binay for being here this morning and for having us. I represent the Christian Broadcasting Network Asia. By our very name, we are Christian Broadcasters. And there are two points that I just want to raise, Madam Chair, uh, given that we only have three minutes. I actually have a video prepared to present to you, but because of lack of time, uh, I will just submit uh, uh, copies of the DVDs that we have produced with the 700 Club. We have been on air for 25 years, and through these years, we have gathered stories of different types of people who have been transformed by the love and grace of God, especially through the Word of God. And in this uh, DVD, uh, I would like to present uh, to to the Madam Chair and to also the Senators, stories of former LGBTQ practitioners who have been transformed by the love of God. What we're trying to say, Madam Chair, is that the condition or the um, orientation of uh, people who have exercised or, or, or who fall under the LGBT community is actually fluid and can actually change, as uh, evidenced by stories that we have gathered here. There are also three gentlemen who are here in the panel who would like to also present their stories, how they have come from the LGBT community and how they are now living and practicing uh, their male gender th through which they were born in. Um, the, our second concern as Christian broadcasters, Madam Chair, is we are concerned that our freedom of expression, our freedom of the press, and our freedom of relig religion might be curtailed upon by the SOGI Bill, precisely because our programs speak from the Word of God, which also calls out different conditions 
of people, including uh, those who fall under adultery, those who fall under murder, those who fall under uh, homosexuality. And these are topics that we discuss lengthily in our program. And we are concerned that with the SOGI bill, we will be limited in the exercise of our freedom. That's why we would like to post our opposition to the bill. And uh, if I may, Madam Chair, uh, because Attorney Winnie Salombides does not only represent the Christian Broadcasting Network Asia, but he actually represents different Christian uh, educational institutions, private, in, uh, private companies, and NGOs, if he would also be given an opportunity to present. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I will submit this DVD to all of you as, um, as our evidence. <laughs> Madam Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Ms. Kata. Yes, Senator Nancy. Just a Nancy. correction lang dun sa statement ni Attorney Kanya kanina about Congresswoman Geraldine Roman. She is already recognized as a woman. Her birth certificate has been changed to female already. By a judicial order. By a judicial By order. By a judicial order. Yes. In the Philippines? Yes. Uh, Up to, I think, hanggang Supreme Court na huata yung sa kanya. Uh, we will Thank research you. that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Nancy. Thank you, Attorney Kanya. Uh, yes, of course, uh, we'll recognize the legal counsel of 700 Club Asia. Uh, just momentarily before that, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of, hi, ma'am, of uh, Ms. Fanny Tatad, uh, ex Executive Secretary of the CBCP. Good morning, ma'am, and thank you for joining us. Uh, yes, Attorney Salumbides, you have the floor. Good morning, Madam Chair and our beloved senators. There was an interesting exchange at the start of our committee hearing wherein uh, we were also reminded that we need to be sensitive to people regarding their feelings whenever they are mistakenly called by another appellation or gender. And I often find myself in a situation like that. Dahil nga po ang aking palayo ay Winnie, eh madalas na pagkakamalan akong babae. At minsan pinapakilala rin po ako sa mga fora, sa mga public speaking uh, engagements po namin na ako ay isang babae o misan ay tinatawag rin akong ma'am. Pero bagamat naiintindihan ko ang importansya na tayo ay dapat maging sensitibo at tawagin natin sa tamang pangalan o titulo ang ating kapwa-tao, eh ang importante rin po siguro, hindi po tayo mapako doon sa pagiging sensitibo ng ating mga damdamin o mga feelings, kundi rather than be stuck with that feeling of uh, being slighted, can't we move from sensitivity towards maturity wherein we would be more accepting, mas maintindihan natin, lalo na sa panahon po natin ngayon, eh dahil sa sobrang dami nga po ng mga permutations o pagbabago, ang nagiging epekto po sa publiko at sa madla ay eh confusion rather than certainty regarding who we are, regarding who we're dealing with. And as it has been mentioned that I also represent schools, lalo na po yung mga elementary at saka high school, I also am into family ministry. With regard to Senate Bill Number 159, these are some of the concerns that we would want to voice out. While we would want to also empower the members of the LGBT community, there are also serious concerns regarding labeling. Dumami na po yung mga terminolohiya. Hindi nga po LGBT na lang, kundi may mga plus-plus pa. At kung ang ating nga pong advocacy is for us to be a more inclusive, accepting society, isn't this proposed law also coming up with a special kind of labeling? Nagkakaroon din po tayo ng mga iba't ibang mga kategorya, and not only do we label them as uh, queer, as transgenders, but... Uh, would this not lead to also undue preference for our brothers and sisters who are members of the LGBT community? Hindi lamang po ini-empower because we recognize that they have suffered ostracism or discrimination in the past. Pero ngayon po, total reversal naman po. Na talagang parang binibigyan natin sila ng maraming karapatan, protection, at hindi lamang po yun para sa mga mamamayang Pilipino na hindi pa handang tanggapin ang ganitong klaseng subjective 
na orientation or direction or preference nila, sila ay meron ding parang uh, nakalaan na imposition ng sanction sa ilalim nga po nitong uh, proposed law o sa bill nga po natin na ito. Not only that, it has been mentioned that this bill is very heavy on subjectivity. We see terms such as personal sense of identity, direction, or attraction, at talaga naman pong ito, eh puro damdamin nga po ang uh, masasabi po nating factor for a certain choice. Siyempre po, iniisip rin nga po natin kung ano magiging epekto nito, hindi lang po sa ating lipunan at komunidad, kundi maging sa ating mga kabataan, sa mga pamilya. Para po sa mga pamilyang Pilipino, pagka tayo po eh, may mga batang mag-aaral sa eskwelahan, sa panimula po ng school year, pagka sinabi po ng mga anak na gusto po niyang magpalda, ang pipiliin niyang uniform ay palda imbis na pantalon sa kabila ng kanyang uh, genetic gender na lalaki siya. Kailangan po ba na ang mga magulang ay biglang mag-adjust at sumuporta sa ganong klaseng nais, hindi lamang po ito fashion sense, kundi preference or orientation ng mga mag-aaral at sisimulan silang bigyan, gastusan, at bigyan ng mga kasuotang pambabae. What if in the middle Attorney, of the school year, Attorney, could you please year, wrap up within about a minute? Thank you, Sa kalagitnaan po ng school year ay bigla pong maisipan na siya ay hindi na babae, kundi lalaki na at gusto na niya natanggalin ang kanya mga kasuotang pambabae. Nangangahulugan po ba nito na ang mga magulang at ang mga pamilya ay kailangan tustusan, gastusan, at suportahan ang pagbabago ng kanyang preference at ang kanilang kakaunting pondo, ang kanilang resources na inilalaan para sa edukasyon ng kanilang mga anak ay kanilang itutuon para dito sa pagbabago ng preference ng kanilang mga anak. So nakikita po natin ang saklaw po nito nga panukalang batas na ito ay malawak. Gaya nga po na nasabi ni Attorney Lindon, ang identity ay napaka-importante. Hindi lamang po sa ating interaction sa pang-araw-araw, kundi may mga implikasyon din po ito sa national security, even now that we also talk about global terrorism, wherein people need to be identified. People need to also be pegged so that it cannot be so flexible so that uh, people will not be like chameleons, so even the national ID system, paano po ito? Doon sa mga basic data at information ng tao. Kung sasabihin, eh, laging nagbabago ang ating mga ID, ang ating mga pasaporte, ang pamahalaan nga po ba ay maglalaan na naman ng ganong klaseng pondo at mekanismo para sa ganitong pag-sway ng iba't ibang preference at direksyon. So maganda po, ito'y ating uh, pag-usapan at masinsinang pag-aralan. Salamat po. Salamat din po, Attorney Salumbides. Uh, next, I'd like to recognize uh, from Intercessors for the Philippines or... Sorry. Uh, I'd like to recognize first before Mr. De La Cruz, uh, Mr. Cesar Buendia. You have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I represent a group of individuals who used to live as homosexuals but have been redeemed and changed by the grace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ. Some of us used to have promiscuous homosexual lifestyles, while others used to have, used to have fairly decent monogamous same-sex relationships. None of us, however, were spared from the most severe forms of discrimination known to man. We too were beaten, scorned, rejected, abhorred. We know the pain. Nevertheless, we stand firmly against the soggy bill. Here are our reasons. One, the soggy bill is premised on the acronym LGBTQ+, which presupposes that gender identity is defined by personal sexual desires and preferences. Therefore, if you are a lesbian, if you are, you are a lesbian if you are female who desires sexual relations with another female. You are gay if you are a man who prefers to have sexual relations with another man, and so on and so forth. One's gender identity is designated according to one's subjective desires. It is defined merely by a perception <coughs> or a product of the mind. It is not based on objective, observable, and verifiable facts. <clears throat> we must be reminded of the truism 
the mind is a mysterious thing. No man really knows what goes on in another human being's mind. As such, we believe that any law that guarantees rights to citizens based on mere perceptions, beliefs, and mindsets, mindsets is dangerous. What if a 12-year-old child, for instance, believes and asserts that he is already 21 years old? Shall the child be accorded the right to vote, to marry, to drink alcohol? What Your mic, please. What if a Filipino citizen firmly and sincerely believes in his heart and mind that he is American, despite clear physical and documentary evidence that he isn't? Should he be granted the rights given exclusively to Americans? Number two, LGBTQ plus has no clear definition. The fact that people keep on adding new letters to the acronym means that the said acronym has no clear and definite me meaning. The fact that it has a plus sign in the end could only mean that there's a possibility of adding more letters to the acronym. What, what will then prevent the possibility of adding P or pedophilia or B for bischarity or N for necrophilia? What, will these words be accommodated in the acronym in the future? Will these people also be given rights? The meaning of the acronym LGBTQ plus is ambiguous. It only serves to sow confusion. Number three, based on the experiences of many in our group, we have, to understand, we have come to understand that homosexuality is to be akin, is akin to religion in the sense that it is based on belief or faith. A man believes he is a woman, therefore he is gay. A person believes in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, therefore he is Christian. We believe that Sogi Bill gives undue special rights to one belief or faith over another. For example, under Section 5B, private schools are prohibited from making a policy that homosexuals cannot be assigned to young boys, as, it, as its provisions say that sexual identity cannot be base, the basis of any work assignment. Section 10 imposes the obligation even on private schools to promote sexual diversity. What is the point of both provisions except to make Philippine society to be dominated by a multi-sex mindset? For us who have been redeemed by the Lord Jesus Christ, we believe the verifiable truth that there are only two sexes and that Soggy Bill is ex ex excessively discriminatory against the majority of Filipinos who believe the same. Mr. Bendia, please wrap up within about yes. a minute. Thank you. Number four, we have conducted a preliminary reading of the Soggy Bill and have discovered that it will only make those of us who believe in the Christian story second-class citizens. It will make the rest of society who believe that there are only two genders adjust to the very subjective choices of individuals at any time. A person can consider himself as male or at one point in his life, female at another point, and then male again, or a combination of both. It will have to, it will, will have to be the rest of, um, I will skip that part. We pray that no part of the soggy bill be passed. If the framers of the bill only seek product protection for people who are discriminated upon, then pass a law that will protect all people from discrimination and not only one group of people. Discrimination, after all, is not exclusively experienced by one particular, particular group of people only. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Buendia. And your last point is indeed very well taken. And uh, in fact, I want to affirm that the object of this hearing is to eventually pass a law that indeed protects all. Because it is the belief behind the bill that each individual has a SOGI, even cisgender, even heterosexual people, but certainly providing protections against discrimination to all, and especially at this point in time, the LGBT plus community, who historically suffer the greatest amount of discrimination uh, based on SOGI. And certainly, we are not talking at here at all about pedophilia, bestiality, necrophilia, which are penal prohibited and penalized under a revised penal code and unfortunately are not limited in their commission to uh, individuals of any particular uh, SOGI. Thank I have you, a Mr. Buendia. Yes, uh, I would, uh, the uh, commi uh, committee would appreciate the submission, Mr. Buendia. Thank you.
Uh, I'd like to call now for intercessors for the Philippines, Mr. Obed de la Cruz. You have the floor. All right. Uh, good morning, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning, uh, everybody. Um, in our uh, in our group, uh, basically, uh, well, because we are limited by, uh, by three minutes, so uh, I submitted a copy of our paper already to the Secretariat. So I just want to uh, manifest that uh, uh, from from our group, uh, we are coming from a like natural law position, like uh, because you know in, in legal theory we have natural law and positivist and interpretivist. So for us, we are coming from a natural law. Uh, uh, perspective, but we know that you know natural law is not entirely enforceable. That's why we need a positive law. Uh, we need to enact laws. So uh, fr from uh, so right now, I think the best uh, uh, perspective to take in is uh, constructivist, where we try to reconcile the natural law and the positive law. Now, uh, because of this, we want to keep uh, uh, we want to keep our definitions uh, based on what we believe is on on you know standing on natural law. So we've already forwarded to the committee uh, like some definitions that uh, we, we still ad adhere to when it comes to gender, sex discrimination. Uh, and we, we cited like the Philippine le legal lexicon, so Supreme Court uh, decisions on this, so that uh, you know, we could be more uh, uh, like, uh, like contextual in our, you know, in our legal system. Also, uh, we would like to, uh, re to also clarify because there are people who thought that we are homophobics that we are promoting violence against LGBT. We uh, we want to uh, let everybody know that we post when we shared our position paper in our uh, in our Facebook page. We uh, specifically wrote there, please do not bash or condemn people, because uh, even even us, for example, somebody would comment on our pages that is really very discriminatory. We d we don't we don't approve. You know, uh, we, we we actually we I pr personally posted an up an update condemning the celebration of the. Uh, death penalty of LGBTs in Iran, like they were, uh, they were, you know, they were sentenced to death penalty because simply because they're LGBT. We even posted uh, a post that saying saying that uh, we we condemn that act. We we are not we we're, we're not you know that that kind of people. But still, we have objections in the in the in the bill. Uh, I'm sorry, I was just informed yesterday that I will be appearing today. And I'm also uh, like a, a, st a student, uh, aside from you know my other duties outside the school. So that's why uh, I will be updating this. But I already gave the committee a copy. Uh, but uh, before 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 I end, uh, I want to uh, like let everybody know that we here uh, we put a list of laws that can be actually used for everybody, civil, criminal laws that can be uh, uh, done. I mean, no, like applied for everybody, regardless of gender. And actually, these laws do not even qualify gender. And we have even placed a case that some, in some cases, a civil law is better than a criminal law. Because, for example, uh, in, in, one, in one case, Loriente versus Andigan Bayan, uh, it was already according to the rules that he was lacking a requirement in his clearance. However, uh, three persons before him already applied for the clearance, and they were approved even if they were lacking the same requirement. But when it, comes to, when it came to his case, he, he was uh, disapproved. So even if the, uh, the court ruled that even if the the uh, 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 the, uh, the the company had the uh, legal right to disapprove him, but because he was unjustly discriminated in that situation, so he was uh, the, the no, nobody was sent to prison, but he was paid ninety thousand pesos in 1991. Well, the difference between a civil case and a criminal case is that civil case the money goes to the victim, in a criminal case the money goes to the government. So, um, so, we so that's why we have uh, placed some alternatives here. And uh, whenever we say that, uh, like for example, we only accept male or female as, you know, as, our qu our, as our considerations for gender, we want to say that we, in our perspective, we've already absorbed, uh, like for example, a, a, a lesbian, uh, we so in our definition, she, she, is a, she is a woman. So for us, uh, the laws already are enough to, uh, to, uh, to be applicable to all. And and if ever a court or a public officer will refuse to apply this law to the LGBT, let that public officer also be liable. So, uh, so we're, we're in that sense that uh, please uh, use the laws, enforce the laws. They are so, we uh, sad kami kasi ang daming sinasabi na hindi daw wala rog batas na protect sa LGBT. We're in fact, they're persons. So as persons, ang daming batas applicable to all na dapat i-apply sa kanila at kapag sila ay na, uh, na biktima, Bigyan din dapat sila ng hustisya under our legal system. Salamat po. Salamat, Mr. De La Cruz, and also for your uh, openness on LGBT uh, IQ+. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to call now for pro-life Philippines, Mr. Ansel Beluso.
Madam Chair, Honorable Members of the Senate Committee on Women, Children, Female Relations, and Gender Ident Equality, good morning. I am here today representing Pro-Life Philippines and Couples for Christ Foundation for Family and Life. Please note that Pro-Life Philippines has already submitted our position paper on our opposition to the bill which is the subject of today's public hearing, the SOGI bill. My name is Ansel Beluso. I am an ex-gay, which means I used to live a very active gay lifestyle, but has since chosen the path of change and renewal. I am happily and blissfully married to my wife, Joyce. For 18 years now, we have three children, Noel, Gian, and Jaben. I have actually listed more than a dozen reasons why the entire Filipino nation should totally and unequivocally reject the SOGI bill, but I want to zero in on just one this morning due to paucity of time. Madam Chair, I humbly and most respectfully submit that because of its official invention of special LGBTQI plus rights, the SOGI bill, when enacted into law, shall, shall forcibly engender and perpetuate a culture of lies, deceit, deception, and duplicity into the life of our country and people. If I may, Madam Chair, I'd like to mention only four of these lies. First lie, genitals do not determine sex and gender. Wrong. Truth is, genitals do determine sex and gender. Basic biology tells us that in humans, biological sex and gender is determined by five factors present at birth. The presence or absence of a Y chromosome, the type of gonads, the sex hormones, the internal genitalia, such as the uterus in females, and the external genitalia. Nowhere in any scientific journal or biology, biology textbook can we find it said that sex and gender can be determined otherwise. As was mentioned already earlier, findings of a landmark study done by a group of geneticists at the Broad Institute of MIT and Harvard and the University of Helsinki released only last month, which examined the genomes of almost half a million people, indicate that there is no such thing as a gay gene. If you have a penis, you are male, a boy, a man. If you have a vagina, you are female, a girl, a woman. And transsexuals, if they submit to a DNA test, trans women are still men according to their DNA. DNA. Second lie, if a person has a homosexual orientation, the path to fullness of life is to embrace and live it out. Wrong. Truth is, there is such a thing as gender dysphoria. Gender dysphoria is the, dis is a, is the distress a person feels due to a mismatch between their gender identity and their sex assigned at birth. The American Psychiatric Association states that gender dysphoria is a mental disorder. It further states that Treatment for gender dysphoria may involve supporting the person through changes in gender expression. Treatment may also include counseling or psychotherapy. In other words, the real path to fullness of life for persons with gender dysphoria, such as the transgenders, is treatment or therapeutic intervention not genital mutilation or hormone therapy. Third lie, Madam Chair. Change is impossible for persons with same-sex attraction. Wrong. Truth is, gays 
can change. And we do change. According to Dr. Lisa Diamond, a top researcher of the American Psychological Association and an avowed lesbian activist, sexuality desire is fluid. Homosexual desire is not hardwired. That born that way and can't change is a myth. Feelings don't overrule volition. Behavior is a choice. One does not need to act on every feeling, especially sexual feelings. The born that way argument is political, not scientific. Sexual orientation is subject to change. Fourth lie. It is for the welfare of children with evident homosexual orientation that they be made to learn about the LGBTQI plus ideology and guided to embrace the gay lifestyle, even at a young age, wrong. Truth is, according to the document updated in September 2017 by doctors Michelle Cretella and Quentin Van Meter, president and vice president respectively of the American College of Pediatricians, as well as Dr. Paul McHugh, distinguished service professor of psychiatry at Johns Hopkins Medical School, raising children in an environment that espouses, promotes, propagates, and institutionalizes the so-called gender ideology actually harms them. It also says conditioning children into believing that a lifetime of chemical and surgical impersonation of the opposite sex is normal and healthful is child abuse. The statement further states, endorsing gender discordance as normal via public education and legal policies is injurious to children. Madam Chair, yes, I Mr. can Beluso, go on please and wrap on, up in but one, I know a time Thank is you. running out. In closing, may I humbly suggest that the so-called LGBTQI plus ideology that the SOGI bill espouses and promotes is not a part of Filipino culture. One, one very simple proof. There is no Tagalog word for bisexual or transgender or queer, or intersex, and all the other terms used by the LGBTQI, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, or whatever other letters that the activists are using. This is alien to us as Filipinos. And I would like to echo the message of Pope Francis in the meeting of families during his visit to our country in 2015. He said, Resist ideological colonization that tries to destroy the family. Madam Chair, thank you very much and may God bless and have mercy on us all. Amen, Mr. Beluso. Uh, I would like to call now a resource person who, thank you, you were also here on time, like all our other resource persons, but needs to leave uh, in a few minutes so that we can hear from uh, one of our resource persons from the women's organizations and academe. I'd like to call uh, Dr. Uh, Natalie or Natsi uh, Africa Verseles of the uh, UP Center for Women and Gender Studies. You have the floor. Thank you, Madam Chair. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. I was Catholic school educated from preschool to high school. And the God I came to know is compassionate, just, and intolerant of oppression. I am as heteronormative and as cisnormative as it gets. Assigned sex, female. Sexual orientation, heterosexual. Gender identity, woman. Gender expression, feminine. All in perfect congruence everything in place according to what society dictates as appropriate for my sex. Privileged on the basis of my sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression. Free 
from the daily oppression experienced by those who do not fit into the socially constructed norms on human sexuality. Oppression. The scholars Lon Yus and Hassel describe oppression as, and I quote, prejudice and discrimination directed toward the group and perpetuated by ideologies and practices of multiple social institutions, end of quote. They draw attention to how privilege and oppression are fundamentally about unequal power relations. For those of us who are fortunate enough to be in a position of privilege, is it compassionate and just to exercise our power by demanding adherence to ideologies and practices that we know are oppressive? It's not the moral imperative to dismantle all systems of oppression, to end all forms of inequality. I make three points. The first is human sexuality is diverse. Lonius and Hassel also pointed out, and I quote, the scientific and historical evidence of the malleability of gender, the wide range of sexualities across cultures, the range of expectations for masculine and feminine behavior across culture, time, and even an individual's lifespan suggests that gender is not quite as natural as we suppose, end of quote. A statement by the Psychological Association of the Philippines asserts that, and I quote, decades of scientific research have led mental health professional organizations worldwide to conclude that lesbian, gay, and bisexual orientations are normal variants of human sexuality, end of quote. Rigid beliefs on sex and gender place people in boxes or entrap them in closets, and they do not represent the realities on human sexuality. It is diversity that is a natural characteristic of human sexuality. My second point, sexuality is a development issue. The Sexuality and Development Program of the Institute of Development Studies, University of Sussex in the UK, emphasizes that sexuality is a development issue. It asserts that, and I quote, development should be about increasing people's well-being, particularly those who are poor and marginalized. Social and legal norms and economic structures based on sexuality have a huge impact on people's physical security, bodily integrity, health, education, mobility, and economic status, end of quote. Nobel Prize laureate Amartya Sen declared, and I quote, development is freedom, the freedom to do and to be, the live the, the, the li to live the life one values or has reason to value, end of quote. Being a member of the LGBTI sector can have deleterious effects on an individual's welfare. Prejudice and discrimination towards LGBTQI individuals impinge on their human dignity, their freedoms, and their capacities for self-actualization. My third and last point, LGBTQI rights are human rights. According to the United Nations Office of the High Commissioner on Human Rights, and I quote, deeply embedded homophobic and transphobic attitudes often combined with a lack of adequate legal protection against discrimination on grounds of sexual orientation and gender identity expose many lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender people of all ages and in all regions of the world to egregious violations of their human rights. They are discriminated against in the labor market, in schools, in hospitals, mistreated and disowned by their own families. The legal obligations of states to safeguard the human rights of LGBT people are well established in international human rights law on the basis of the U Universal Declaration of Human Rights and subsequently agreed international human rights treaties. All people, irrespective of sex, sexual orientation, or gender identity, are entitled to enjoy the protections provided for by international human rights law, including in, respects, in respect of rights to life, security of person and privacy, the right to be free from discrimination, and the right to freedom of expression, end of quote. 
I am as heteronormative and cisnormative as it gets, but I decry a world that discriminates against those who are not like me. The sufferings of the members of the LGBTI, LGBTQI community cannot simply be negated, ignored, or dismissed. Their struggles are inextricable from all other struggles for social justice. Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and intersex individuals are not going to disappear. Despite the non-fulfillment of their rights and the absence of adequate legal protection for them, they will merely remain persistently vulnerable to discrimination, abuse, and violence. From our position of privilege, do we choose to turn a blind eye to this? Or do we utilize our power to create and nurture an economic, political, social, and cultural order that embraces an inclusive view of sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression? Human sexuality is diverse. Sexuality is a vital development issue. LGBTQI rights are human rights. Maraming salamat po sa lahat at magandang umaga po. Marami salamat din, Natsi. <laughs> so now, uh, I would like to call uh, for the Catholics for Equality, uh, Lance de la Cruz, Mr. de la Cruz from De La Salle University. Uh, thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, to the chairperson of the committee, Senator Lisa Ontiveros, to the senators present here today, Senator Nancy Binay, Senator Amy Marcos, to the advocates, to my brothers in Christ, and to everyone present here, isang mapagpalayang araw po sa inyo. This morning, I pray to God that I channel His message of love. Ako po si Lance. I am the student council president from De La Salle University, a Catholic university. I also grew up in a Catholic family. At dito ko po natutunan na kasama sa sampung utos ng Diyos na namahalin ang kapwa, tulad ng pagmamahal ng Panginoon. I believe that we did not choose our soji, but for what is worth, for what it's worth, I am straight, and I am also cisgender. Yes, I grew up, re I grew up relatively normal than most kids. Hindi ko po na-experience na tawagin akong isang abomination. Hindi ko rin po na-experience to, to be humiliated in class for being gay. Hindi ko po kinakailangan matakot mag-CR o pumasok sa school dahil baka ako ay matahim. I am lucky. But the world around me isn't as privileged as I am. The world around us isn't as privileged as we are. I've seen things that we straight people usually just brush off because it doesn't matter to us. I've seen kids who were bullied for being too feminine. Nakakilala po ako ng mga tao who were unable to go to school because the guards would not allow their gender-affirming uh, uniforms. Nakakilala po ako ng mga tao who were disowned by their own families for being true to themselves. And that has always been the problem. We've always just seen things. We have always been spectators to things that deep inside, within our Christian values, we know are wrong and hateful. We have seen discrimination and hatred unfold in front of our own eyes, and we did nothing. Tayo po ay nasa posisyon ng pribileyo. We could only imagine, ano ang gagawin ko if ever it happened to us? Kung katulad ba nila tayo, ito ba ay mangyayari sa kanila? Muli, hindi po pinipili ng tao maging straight o bakla. Ang tanging choice po ay mag-come out despite the threat of discrimination, hate, and violence. And we, as Catholic student leaders, refuse to remain as spectators any longer. Pinapakita po ng mga pag-aaral that LGBT kids are more likely to have mental health concerns. In Canada, one in four LGBT kids are told to leave home, and 30% of all suicide cases comes from the members of the, from the members of the LGBT community. Hindi pa po kasama rito ang napakaraming cases ng mga batang hindi makapag-aral just because educational institutions don't welcome them. Senators, I see myself as a father in the future, a good parent, just like the good senators here present today. But I worry for my future children and our children's children. Hindi po ako natatakot sa bakla dahil hindi naman dapat katakua, katakutan ang hindi masasamang tao. Mas natatakot po ako sa kinabukasan. Nalalaki ang mga anak ko at ang mga, at ang mga anak ng mga, magiging, ng, mag, ng mga magiging anak ko 
sa isang lipunang walang pagpapahalaga sa katauhan ng isang tao. Mas natatakot po ako na lalaki ang mga anak ko at anak ng mga anak natin na okay lang silang hindi makapagtrabaho, hindi, makapag, hindi makapasok sa eskwalahan o maharas sa kalye dahil lang LGBT sila. I refuse to be another spectator and allow discrimination to happen in front of my own eyes and the eyes of the next generation. Just like everyone else here, I want to be a good Catholic parent in the future. If we care for our children and our children's children, we have to create a culture that is open for all of us. We may be straight and privileged, but we are not narrow and indifferent. Senators, everyone in this esteemed hall, I would like to end with this. Every time you want to say hurtful things to a member of the LGBT community, every time you, den you deny them of their God-given rights, I want you to imagine telling that to your son, to your own daughter, or to Jesus. Growing up, I saw Jesus as someone who embraced the oppressed and those who were shunned out from society because he too was shunned out from society. I was raised on the Christian values of compa compassion, love, and acceptance. And as a young Filipino, as student leaders in our Catholic institutions, we are reaching out to the various groups who stand in opposition to recall the teachings of the church and see that the LGBTQ community is no different from oneself. We do not forgive because they haven't sinned. Instead, we need to forgive ourselves for how we have wronged them. From here on, we love, and we love unconditionally the same way we love God. Mga kapatid, mga kaibigan, the time to win equality is now. Maraming salamat po, Madam Chair. Thank you. Maraming salamat din, Lance. Uh, now, I'd like to call uh, to speak from the Muslim community in the Philippines, uh, Radem Morados. Madam Chair? Yes, uh, before Radem, uh, Senator Nancy, please. Siguro just uh, to raise a point, uh, Mr. De La Cruz, siguro yung discrimination should cover everybody, not just gender. I mean, for example, ako, I've been discriminated of my color. Does that mean that I need to file a bill to protect people like me? So sana, sana yung, yung discussion natin when it comes to discrimination should be more universal, should be more encompassing. But I don't know if it's the, this is the right committee because ang alam ko, Ms. Madam Chair, there's also a pending bill, I think filed by Senator Angara, which is referred to the committee of Senator Aini, na baka siguro magandang tignan din natin kung paano natin maha-harmonize, baka pwede ipasok doon sa bill na yon itong SOGI, para hindi lang segmented masyado yung concept of um, discrimination. Yun lang naman, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Nancy. The point is well taken. Uh, initially, it's a matter of form also because the uh, comprehensive anti-discrimination bills, which we in the Senate all support, uh, addresses various kinds of discrimination on different grounds and requiring different protections. In a way, para siyang Magna Carta of Women in that sense. After Magna Carta of Women, we are now passing piecemeal legislation, uh, different laws na ipinanganak ng Magna Carta of Women. So in the same way as we explore no, yung uh, supporting both bills, yung comprehensive uh, anti-discrimination bill and then the SOGI-based uh, SOGI equality bill, uh, we, we're trying to see how they can complement each other, but we continue to look at the SOGI equality bills to find particular protections against discriminations based particularly on SOGI. Um, so, but I just want to express that support of the committee for the bills uh, in the uh, Committee on uh, Cultural Communities chaired by Senator Aini. So thank you. Uh, so now, could we please hear from uh, Radem Morados uh, from the Muslim community? Okay, thank you, po, and assalamualaikum to all our brothers and sisters here. And thank you to the Senate Committee on Women and Equality and Gender Equality for inviting me over. Uh, I would also like to uh, share, no, na in every uh, talk and hearing about the Soji Bill, it's always the Catholic sector or Christian sector are saying that uh, na infringe or na de discriminate yung rights nila. And I also wonder, anong saang, I, I still don't get it, anong saang provisions sa SOGI bill 
ang nagdi-discriminate sa mga religious sector. I mean, what are we fighting for here? And there are also Muslims as well, and there are also indigenous people as well. And there are also LGBT in those communities as well. And we should also protect them. Kasi, at the end of the day, merong mga religious policies ang Islam that do not uh, agree to the Christian religious policies and Christian policies do not adhere to the Islamic policies and also to the indigenous policies. But the SOGI bill will address the commonality which is to protect everybody regardless of uh, faith, gender, and, and uh, race. And I think this is the importance of the uh, SOGI bill. Uh, based on the studies of ASEAN SOGI caucus during or before and during the Marawi siege, there are a lot of LGBT communities in Marawi who were discriminated and separated during the before uh, before they were discriminated by the community. Then after the siege, they were worsely discriminated because sila yung biniblame bakit daw nagka-siege dahil doon sa mga bakla, kasi dumadami daw yung bakla sa Marawi. And there are a lot of LGBT communities in Mindanao with, with, uh, on a different background from Catholic, from, from Islam, from the indigenous community, who's been violated, who's been harassed. And I think we should really put into consideration na Yung lives and, and, and human dignity ng LGBT in Mindanao are far worse in are, are far worse compared to Luzon. And I think the Soji Equality Bill will help out that this community should be protected from violence. This is not just emotional and mental violence, this is also physical violence. And we have a lot of especially in the Muslim community, there are uh, uh, reports and stories of uh, conversion therapy, which is through uh, forced marriages, uh, forced training in the military, and whatsoever, and harassment. And every time na merong siege sa Sambuanga siege, and merong conflict sa Maguindanao, and my uh, siege sa Marawi, hindi masyadong inclusive yung media natin on asking, paano yung mga LGBT natin that caught in, in the crossfire between the, uh, the government and also non-state armed groups. They are also affected and they are being discriminated and they were also being killed. And, and, and in, the, in, the, in the refugee camp, there are far worse discrimination experienced by the LGBT community as well, simply because they are not recognized. For example, I would like also to highlight na yung, for example, discrimination sa uh, pag-distribute ng relief goods. Uh, LGBTs are known to be breadwinners in Mindanao. But when it comes to distribution of relief goods, my protocol na parang every household. Breadwinners are the head of the family and they should, be all, they should be given the chance to be able to accept relief goods because they are the head of the family. But the protocol of some government agency, it should be composed of mother and father, wife and, and, and dad. And, and, and I think it's Please wrap up within one yeah, minute. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I think discrimi discrimination is a choice, violence is a choice, act of any crime is also a choice, but we cannot, if, if, if it's true that it, this is all feelings, does it justify violence? Should we, should we not protect these uh, marginalized sectors who've been suffering for many decades out of violence of, of the community and sometimes even of the government? So I think that we should really pass the SOGI bill immediately. Thank you, Po. Sukran Radem. At this point, I'd like to uh, call, uh, because uh, I think she has to leave in a few minutes also, uh, from the Institute of Women's Studies of St. Scholastica's College. Kaya, sister, nagbebehave ako kasi kulasa din po ako. Uh, Scholastican from kinder till fourth year high school. And same with Senator Nancy. Yes. Uh, Senator Annie, we grew up with Sister Mary John, sabi nga ni Senator Nancy. So please, you have the floor, Sister Mary John Manansan. I would like to say that I find these discussions very enlightening, your uh, contributions. And the Institute of Women's Studies strongly supports the protection of women, men, and other genders from any forms of discrimination and the promotion of programs and avenues for safe spaces including workplaces and schools free from gender-based violence 
and discrimination and embrace diversity and inclusivity towards the fulfillment of gender equality. Now, why is there a bill? Because if you are, if there are groups of people, I mean, you can discuss a lot about whether people have a right to, to choose their sexuality and all that, and maybe it will be an ending discussion. But it is a fact that there are groups of people who have done that and they are suffering discrimination. That is what we are facing, I think. <clears throat> and just as uh, I have been um, struggling against the oppression and discrimination of women for, for ages, and that's why there is called an affirmative action for women because it's also a fact that there is no equality between men and women up to now in this country. So y the men cannot say, oh, why don't we have also affirmative action? Because it's a fact that they are not discriminated against as gender. And therefore, it is really the one that is discriminated against that is the focus of our attention. And even if we are really for against discrimination of anybody, but sometimes you have to focus on, on groups of people that are actually uh, uh, suffering discrimination and uh, violence. So that's why we realize that there is a discrimination of this group of people. They are, they are facing shaming, ridicule, harassment, violence, and they are even deprived of, of uh, services, of um, basic services. So in its advocacy towards the fulfillment of human rights and gender justice, our institute supports this bill to provide equal access to people to for education, employment, social services, etc. And what I would like to emphasize here is that I don't see that this bill is giving any special rights to these groups. They are just saying that the uh, rights of everybody should also be applied to them. That is the way I understand this. And now, I will end on a personal note. As a religious woman, I believe in the respect, compassion, and reverence for all persons because I believe they are all made to the image and likeness of God. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sister Mary John. Ayun, at least yung mga kasama ni Miss Disney, tahimik lang nakakapalakpak, ganun. Uh, yan, ang ating uh, sign language of uh, applause. Uh, thank you so much, Sister. Um, yes, Senator Nancy. Um, now I'd like to... I'd like to uh, request to speak... Yes, of course, Senator Nancy. Can I ask some Sister Mary John, but I don't know if you can answer as part of the theme Scholastic as colleague. Kasi parang meron isa ho dun sa nagiging discussion is a, a scenario. Because di ba yung in the previous hearing, yung definition ng I think trans woman is for them they're um, women already. So technically ho, pwede na silang pumasok sa all girls school like same scholastic as college. Trans women, because apart, based on their definition of trans women, for them, babae sila eh. So if we accept that kind of definition, can, for example, schools like St. Scholastica's College or Assumption be compelled to accept them as students on the basis of, kasi nga, tingin nila na, well, by their definition, women sila. We have to talk about it because there has never been a case. I mean, of, of uh, lesbians, yes, of course we have, no? But always yeah, but uh, trans women are, well, biologically, yes. I don't know how to say it no. in a correct way. Yeah. Eh. That's why Kasi diba, biologically, they're born male, but they define themselves as... Uh, they're assigned male at birth. Oh, yeah. Assigned pala yung proper word, assigned mm -hmm. male, but uh, for them, they're really female. So technically, dapat kung gusto nila pumasok sa Assumption or sa Miriam or... Actually, we have this. I mean, our, our music, music department is open to boys, and there are among them gays. Hindi, pero defined who sila as boy pa din. But this time around, they'll be defined as women. Because based on their definition of a trans woman, mm -hmm. they're female yeah. already. We have not gotten any uh, case about that, but we do have gays and lesbians, only that always it's, it's not just like in heterosexual uh, people, mm -hmm. they are not supposed to have the public uh, display of affection. <laughs> which, which, if we do pass that bill, we have to accept that. I mean, as a school, as a school, magiging part, na, I think we also have to talk kasi yung magiging detalye nung batas eh. Di ba yung kumbaga yung 
magiging magkakaroon na nga ako ng scenario na you have to accept that kind of public display of uh, emotion and um, no even for heterosexual we do not accept public display of affection and actually senator nancy and uh, for the information of all the uh, resource persons here the bill actually does not compel catholic schools to admit uh, any particular students now what we are searching for in this common exercise is the common ground how to despite that how to always uphold the best interest of the child as the basic principle, including in the school setting. So this speaks to earlier issues raised about um, academic freedom, and then later I'm sure the other resource persons will also speak to religious freedom. But just for point of fact, the bill does not compel Catholic schools to accept. Um, but uh, yeah. uh, Madam Chair, it can be a byproduct because if we already accept the definition of terms mm -hmm. na pag trans woman nga, female, they can exercise that option and apply as a student of all girls school or all boys school. And that would be a full flowering of application of the principle of the best interest of the child. Okay. So let's see how much common ground we can find uh, in pushing this bill forward. Okay. Thank you, Senator Nancy. So at this point, I'd like to call from the Iglesia Filipino Independiente, uh, Coco Alviar, you have the floor. Good morning. Uh, magandang tanghali po sa lahat. Ako po si Von Alviar from the Iglesia Filipina Independiente or the Aglipayan Church. We are a liberational church that has interpreted scripture in light of facts and God's commissioning for charity and liberation. The church co-opted me in 2015 to help the Supreme Council of Bishops articulate a statement affirming the existence and rights of LGBTI Q plus individuals. Our common humanity, our shared dignity, was approved by the bishops in February 7, 2017. Incidentally, I am a homosexual cisgender male son of a heterosexual cisgender male priest. I say these belatedly because they have never negatively affected my craft as a writer and my practice that I am a good Christian. I am more than my soji. In fact, all of us in the LGBTQ plus community are more than our soji. Unfortunately, people have reacted choosing to discriminate us based on physical manifestations of our soji. And they think they could see right through us, judge us, and discriminate us. Since daycare in Sanchez Mira Cagayan to university in Baguio City, I've always been criticized for being effeminate and emotional, for not being manly enough. My parents would say, uh, my relatives would say, uh, wag ka lang magsalita, papasa ka eh. But the moment I speak, the treatment changes. Despite all these, I have the willpower to prove my value in my communities and circles. But I cannot say the same for other less privileged people than me, whose chances were impaired by abuses far worse than I've experienced and who didn't belong to families who could send them to good schools or who disowned them, some because of the faith they had. Being LGBTQ is a choice. That is what they tell us. But we, are, we have too many odds stacked against us that make me ask, why would we choose to be minoritized? Having to prove we are good, capable, and beneficial workers, having to conform with a straight environment, these are burdens on us. Our siblings in the faith have claimed that the law sees us equally, but our lived experiences and jurisprudence claim that we are not. Thus, vulnerable sectors need the state to help us claim equity and aid us in reminding everyone that we are human too, enable us to fight back when our rights are abused. It has been claimed that a law protecting LGBTQ individuals would negate Christians' freedom of religion. It is a preposterous claim for me as a Christian. It is used in the wrong spirit. Because freedom of religion is that individuals will not be force-fed belief systems and that we are all free to hold beliefs or not and to conduct ourselves accordingly except when we are harming the rights of others. If anything, many people driven by their Christian beliefs have harmed 
LGBTQ plus individuals even without us provoking them. While they lift from the Bible, the Holy Book cannot be seen as definitive guide. I'm sorry to say, but Timothy 2.11 says, I permit no woman to teach or have authority over man. She is to keep silent. But we have women, uh, positive laws for women. Leviticus 21 says that people who are deformed cannot approach the altar of God. But we have people with disabilities serving the church. Slaves, obey your earthly masters, says Ephesians 6. But slavery is not a reality anymore. It is not legal anymore. With verses inapplicable in our time, how do we say that Bible verses chastising LGBTQ plus individuals should still apply? In the laws enacted for women, children, senior citizens, persons with disability, the justification was unequal treatment on the ground. In real life, despite the constitutional guarantee of equality that our siblings cite, the drawback was sensibilities getting hurt. The reward has been greater empowerment and participation in society for those sectors. We need our guarantee too. Another case in point is the diversity among Christians. A Christian who is homosexual would say, I am empowered by 1 Timothy 5.8 that I should be providing for my relatives. But a business owner would say, because he is homosexual, I am empowered by Romans 1 which tells me you, should, you are an abomination. Who is to say who has the right understanding of faith? This diversity is real. The Aglipayan Church believes in LGBTIQ plus rights because we believe that human rights, the full realization of human rights, is our way to establishing heaven on earth. That means it aligns with our fight for peace talks, economic equity, genuine land reform, and more. Mr. Alvear, please wrap up within one yeah. minute. Okay, Thank you. As faithful Christians, too, we stand on the passage of the Soji Law because we believe God wants to us to exist in a community of love and because it permeates beyond churches. Love the sinner, we are told by our anti-Soji Christian, Christian siblings. But how do you say you love the sinner when you are refusing to give them secular universal rights to jobs, education, and health care basing on their, um, their dissonance sa inyong mga expectations. On social media, there's a viral post saying, Soji means satanic organization of godless people who, ins who are inspired of evil, which is also grammatically wrong. <laughs> to me, it means salvation our God is extending. And I should enjoy a constitutional guarantee that is religious freedom to claim you can't tell me I am wrong. So, from that, let me tell you all that we are Christians, LGBT people, who also believe in Jesus. Thank you so much. Please um, pass the Soji Bill. The committee will uh, do our best, Mr. Alvear. Thank you. Um, and now from the uh, United Methodist Church, Bishop, Solito Toquero, you have the floor, Bishop. Uh, magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Uh, sa medyo problema pa sa amin na sa United Methodist Church, pero nagsasalita ako para dito sa isyo ng uh, pinag-uusapang bill. Uh, ako Kasama ko ang National Council of Churches dito of the Philippines. Kami ay pabor sa bill na ito sapagkat ito ay uh, it doesn't discriminate religious freedom. Hindi ho sumasag ka sa ating pananampalataya, sa ating paniniwala bilang isang mananampalataya, katoliko, protestante, muslim, buddhist. At ito ay binibigyan ng uh, kalayaan at pagpapahalaga sa mga LGBTQIA. Ang mga heterosexual na kagaya ko ay married, I have children. Pribilehyo, pribilehyo yan. Maraming mga pribilehyo. Kung minsan inaabuso ang pribilehyo, 
nagkakaroon ng maraming asawa yung heterosexual. Eh, pero itong pinag-uusapan natin na ito ay pabor kami, pabor ako. Uh, kailangan, kinakailang, matagal na natin dinidiscriminate ang mga LGBTQIA kaya't umaayon kami sa bill na ito. Pangalawa, ang tao ay binigyan ng Diyos na siya katiwala. We are katiwala tayo ng Diyos. Pwede nating baguhin yung mga nandito at uh, sa scientific point of view, eh, yung tilapia nagagawang babae pero uh, para dumami at marami tayong makain pero walang kumukwestiyon yung scientist natin na siyang gumawa nito. Kaya, <laughs> eh, at saka, yung luneta, yan ay gawa rin ng tao pero maganda ang luneta, tayo ginawang katiwala ng Diyos para pagandahin itong mundong ito, hindi para sirain because we are co-creator with God. We are stewards of God so that we can care for creation, care for one another. And we have been discriminating against these people. But now it's time because we are all privileged. We are all privileged, privileged male. We have uh, discriminated against women. We have discriminated against color, etc. But this is a specific deal to give privilege and equal uh, uh, equality with the LGBTQIA. Salamat po. Salamat din po sa inyo, uh, Bishop Toquero. Now I'd like to call from uh, Miriam College. Uh, my mistake. Uh, I will, I'll call our uh, dear resource person from Miriam College a little later. But at this point in time, from the uh, uh, United Church of Christ in the Philippines, or uh, UCCP, um, Yes, from Union Theological Seminary, Professor Revelas Revelation Velunta. You have the floor, Professor. Genesis po ang pangalan ng kuya ko. <laughs> Huhulaan ko po yung pangalan ng middle sibling nyo. <laughs> Alpha po ang pangalan ng sister ko. I'm, I'm reading a, uh, the statement from the United Church of Christ in the Philippines, which is the co-sponsor of Union Seminary. Uh, Hello to everyone, especially our most esteemed senators. The United Church of Christ in the Philippines, the first union of five distinct and different Protestant denominations in the country, approved its LGBTIQ plus affirming statement in May of 2014, the first in this part of the world. The statement is entitled LGBT, which means let grace be total. We are the only denomination in this country that has elected four women bishops. We ordain LGBT clergy. Our seminary, Union Theological Seminary, the oldest Protestant seminary in the Philippines, accepts and trains LGBTIQ plus seminarians. And we are proud of everyone who is a clergy, laity, and faculty in the church. We believe that the proposed SOGI Equality Bill does not in any way infringe on religious freedom. On the contrary, we believe it is an expression of God's grace being total. It is also an expression of what most religions already celebrate, human dignity, human rights, human diversity. We almost always hear it, the argument for one biblical truth. This is what the Bible says. But we at the UCCP, through our seminaries, always ask the question, which Bible? There are 78 books in the Eastern Orthodox Church Bible, 79 in the Ethiopian Orthodox Bible, 73 in the Roman Catholic Church, 66 in the Protestant Version, 24 in the Hebrew Bible. Right now, there are 5,700 Greek manuscripts of the New Testament, no two of which are exactly alike. Right now, there are over 2,000 English translations of the Bible. There are more English translations of the Bible than there are English languages. <laughs> Most of us know this already. Life is about diversity. The Bible is not a book, it is a library. 
it offers theologies, plural. If you read your Bible and pray every day, you will grow, grow, grow in the knowledge that if you read the resurrection stories in Mark, in the tomb, there are three women and one young boy. In Matthew, undisclosed number of women. And then in Luke, two women. In John, Mary Magdalene. Different stories. The Bible is a wellspring of diversity, pluriform and multivocal. And don't ever forget this, Satan knows the Bible. Dictators and despots have used it to perpetuate regimes. Liberation movements have used it to ground their causes. Many of our churches have used it to disempower, dehumanize, and demonize people of color, women, indigenous peoples, LGBTQI, people living with HIV and AIDS, PWDs, and many more. Th the disempowered, dehumanized, and demonized have used it to rise above their oppression. This is what we should do. Diversity is a gift, but diversity in a world where there is so much injustice where farmers have no land to till, where fisher folk have no seas to fish, where Luma children have their schools closed, and where LGBTIQ plus are discriminated every single day is tokenism. Thus, we follow Jesus, the one who stood against the religious leaders of his time who quoted scripture, scripture after scripture to fuel hatred, prejudice, and discrimination, the one who preached good news to the poor, the one who always took the side of the oppressed, the discriminated, and the marginalized. Right now, we believe that Jesus will take the side he always took, the side of the farmers struggling for genuine land reform, the side of the lumads who want their schools back, the side of laborers working for just wages, the side of all diverse communities right here who are calling for the resumption of the peace talks. LGBT, let race be total, pass the SOGI Equality Bill. Thank you. Thank you so much also, uh, Professor Velunta, for the very uh, revelation-spirited uh, input. I'd like to call now uh, Senator Aimee. Yes, uh, thank you very much, our chairwoman. I'm uh, sorry, I have to uh, quickly go ahead. Just a quick manifestation in all of this. Let us remember, as someone said long ago, if someone is gay and searches for the Lord and has goodwill, who am I to judge? That was Pope Francis Po, and that was a long time ago, indeed, in 2013. Uh, who are we to judge? He further said, we shouldn't marginalize people for this. They must be integrated into society. That is my role as a public servant, to integrate the marginalized into society. And these marginalized are not always the poor or the oppressed. Sometimes they are magnificently talented. I would like also to pay tribute uh, to the artists that colored my life, that have defined Filipino identity, and have contributed with their many splendid talent to what we know today as the Philippines. Senaida Amador, Lino Broca, Rolando Tino, Jose Garcia Villa, all intimate friends and relations, Ishmael Bernal, Nick Joaquin, Salvador Bernal, and Ramon Obusan. We have loved them and they have loved us. And that defines culture in the Philippines today. Without them, we would not be where we are today. Thank you, Senator Aimee. Um, now let's hear from <laughs> let's hear from Pastor Kakai Pamaran uh, from uh, the Union Theological Seminary. Good afternoon, Senators. Yeah, I'm here. <laughs> Let me read a statement uh, from the faculty of Union Theological Seminary. Union is the oldest Protestant uh, university in the Philippines. Seminary, <laughs> Protestant seminary. In, in the Philippines, it is co-sponsored by the United Church of Christ in the Philippines and the United Methodist Church. The SOGI Equality Bill does not infringe on religious freedom. On the contrary, it represents what most religions advocate, human equality, human dignity, and human rights. 
a statement on the issue of human sexuality by the faculty of Union Theological Seminary, Philippines. We, the faculty of Union Theological Seminary, Philippines, believe that all are created in God's image and affirm the sacred worth of each human being. We believe that diversity is God's gift and should be celebrated. Since God created and continues to create everyone different, then human diversity is the highest expression and experience of God. Since sexuality is God's gift to humanity, then sexuality is equally diverse. Thus, we at Union Theological Seminary choose to celebrate the breadth and depth of sexual orientations, gender identities, and expressions, and will not discriminate against any member of our student body, faculty, staff, and the communities we serve on the basis of these differences. Our theological education and formation are available to all who would commit their lives to the service of God and God's shalom on earth as it is in heaven, as taught in scripture, the historic creeds, and the life and work of Jesus of Nazareth. We uphold our mission to preach the word and our core values of ecumenical openness, prophetic boldness, Christ-like faithfulness, contextual timeliness, and compassionate witness through our deep solidarity among the LGBTQI plus people. All existing policies, the conduct of community life, pedagogical methods, curriculum, both implicit and explicit, seek to eliminate all forms of discrimination. Authenticity is strongly encouraged and developed as it is foundational to a person's worth and integrity. Our ethics of the other honors one's self-identification, life-giving relationality, and personal and political agency. We affirm the call of our students, faculty, and staff so that they may develop to the fullest of their chosen vocation. Academic, professional, and ministerial pursuits are therefore fully upheld in all aspects and possibilities, including development, credentialing, and ordination. Furthermore, the Faculty of Union Theological Seminary Philippines stands with the LGBTIQ plus among our ranks, as well as those LGBTQI plus among our students, immediate and wider community, and the churches and congregations that they serve as they pursue LGBTIQ plus rights as human rights. It is our belief that at the heart of the Christian gospel is the insistent and relentless pursuit of hope, justice, peace, and love in the name of Jesus the Christ, that all manner of, co of conduct, formation, training, and discipline must contribute toward the common good and justice for all creation. We therefore commit ourselves anew in the creation of safe, caring, and compassionate communities. We believe that the Soji Equality Law is an important step. <laughs> That's prophetic law. Yes. <laughs> an important step in helping birth such communities where peace based on justice reigns, where all our sisters and brothers, where each is each other's keeper, where everyone is God's image bearer human rights for all, because we are all human, right? <laughs> Thank you. Right, Pastor Kakay. <laughs> uh, maraming salamat po. At sana nga nagdidilang anghel kayo. In any case, now we shall hear from the National Council of Churches in the Philippines, Pastor uh, Carlene Romorosa. You have the floor, Pastor. Isang uh, maalab na tanghali po sa atin lahat. Uh, mula sa Sangguniang Pambansa ng Simbahan sa Pilipinas o National Council of Churches in the Philippines, this statement was approved by the 24th General Convention of the National Council of Churches in the Philippines last November 2015. At simula po uh, sa panahon na yon hanggang sa kasalukuyan, ang sampung miyembrong simbahan ng National Council of Churches in the Philippines ay nagpapatuloy in upholding life and dignity for all. Let me read from uh, the statement, create safe spaces for understanding human sexuality. Psalm 139 verses 13 to 15, for you created my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Kita naman po. 
Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. We affirm that human beings are created in the image of God. This imbues them with dignity. Part of dignity is being able to freely express oneself. Human sexuality is a gift from the Creator, a truly good and perfect gift that must be affirmed and celebrated. It is unfortunate that issues on sexuality are wrapped in secrecy and are not discussed in the open due to a wrong perception that sex talk is indecent talk. However, outside the church, there is a fast-growing population of women and men who dare to openly express their sexual orientation and gender identity. It is sad that these expressions are met with discrimination and condemnation, alienating them from the rest of the society. Most are denied of edu educational and employment opportunities. Worse, they are subjected to hate crimes, torture, harassment, sexual assault, rape, and other forms of human rights violations. This is an affront to the God who calls one and all into liberating and inclusive relationships. In light of this, we call on our churches and other Christian churches and their communities to create safe and hospitable spaces where persons can freely talk about their sexual orientation and gender identity without fear of condemnation. Two, to develop biblically based and theologically sound materials on human sexuality to be used for study and reflection in the churches toward a more welcoming environment for those who are perceived to live outside the social norms of sexuality. And thirdly, to proactively and intentionally draw in persons with different sexual orientations and gender identities into activities of the church and church organizations where they can share their gifts and graces. And now as a woman pastor of a, one of the member church of uh, the NCCP, who are raised, nurtured, loved by lesbian parents. When everyone works for justice, it benefits the common good, respecting the dignity of people, whatever their sexual orientation and gender are, is an essential component of social justice. As Christians engage themselves with the challenge of contemporary society in relation to human sexuality, it must be seen as integral in the pursuit of social justice, the common good, and human equality. In defending the cause and rights of the LGBT community, Christians stand for the building of a society where human relationships are not valued on account of what divides us, but on what with fundamentally unites us, respect for the dignity and worthy worth of every human person as redeemed by Christ through the grace of God. Human relationships and social structures should be formed and strengthened on the basis of this Christian commit commitment. Thank you, Po. Thank you, Po, sa inyo, Pastor Numerosa, and for the generous uh, personal witness. Um, ngayon po, gusto ko pong tawagin from Rainbow Catholics, uh, Professor Eva Kalueng. You have the floor, Professor. Maraming salamat, Madam Chair. Magandang tanghali sa ating lahat. Ang Rainbow Catholics Philippines ay buong bukas isip at uh, buong puso na sinusuportahan ang agarang pagpasa ng SOGI Equality Bill. We believe that measures should be put in place to ensure that LGBTIQ plus peoples are given equal rights and are not subject to discrimination and prejudice. The government must play an active role in ensuring that everyone enjoys the same rights and protection. Though religion has been used to oppress and block campaigns for the Soji Equality Bill, we do not see anything in the bill that runs contrary to the church's teachings. The Catholic Church teaches love and acceptance. Nowhere in the proposed bill is it written that LGBTIQ plus will be given special privileges. The bill simply ensures that LGBTIQ plus peoples enjoy the same rights and protections enjoyed by everyone. We believe that we are all God's children. In Galatians chapter 3, verses 26 to 28, it says, 
So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourself, yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor there is male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. In a perfect world, we would not even need a law like this. But we do not live in a perfect world and discrimination and injustices against LGBTIQ people are rampant. Discrimination on the basis of one's soji must be eliminated and enacting this bill will be a step towards achieving this. Before I end, I would like to leave this question for all of us to reflect on. If Jesus is with us today, would Jesus discriminate? Thank you. Thank you, Professor Kaluing. Uh, now I'd like to call to speak both for the Ateneo de Manila University and for the uh, Psychological Association of the Philippines, uh, Mira of, of Reneo. Thank you, Senator. Maraming salamat po. Uh, nabanggit nga po ni Senator Risa na magsasalita po ako bilang isang psikologista, psychologist, in behalf of the Psychological Association of the Philippines, at bilang isang guro mula sa isang katolikong paaralan, ang Ateneo de Manila University. Sisimulan ko po muna dun sa punto ng pagiging psikologista. At uh, meron lang po akong uh, tatlong puntos na gustong ibahagi. Ang unang-una po ay, ang SOGI ay facts. Scientific facts. Sila po, ang sexual orientation, gender identity, gender expression, ay base po sa siyensa, science, sa psikolohiya o psychology. At yung pong sinasabi nating feelings, damdamin, mind, isipan, yun po ay bahagi ng ating pagkatao. At yun po ay may katotohanan base sa siyensa at base po sa uh, mga pag-aaral. At nabanggit lang po kanina na sinabing wala pong gay gene at wala rin pong heterosexual gene. At uh, ang hinihiling po namin ay sana wag gamitin ang siyensa, ang psikolohiya para ituring na mas mababa o naiiba ang pagiging lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, intersex, at queer. Uh, Tinataguyod po namin sa PAP na ang pagiging LGBTIQ ay normal. Hindi po ito sakit, hindi po ito disorder, at idineklara na po ito ng napakaraming organisasyon ng mental health professionals. Hindi lang po kaming psychologists, pat pati po ang mga psychiatrists, mga medical doctors, uh, banggitin na lang po natin ang World Health Organization bilang isang example. At dahil doon, gusto rin po namin i-affirm ang ating kapwa, tao, kapwang transgender, transman, at transwoman. Dahil ang pagiging transgender po ay hindi sakit at hindi disorder at sila po ay normal at dapat ratuhin na kapwa-tao. Ang isa ko pa pong puntos mula sa siyensa ay nagmumula po sa aming mga pag-aaral sa epekto po ng diskriminasyon sa LGBTIQ. Ang base po sa mga pag-aaral sa siyensa, ang epekto ng pagtuligsa, pagkasuklam, pangungutya, pambabastos, Karahasan, dahil sa pagiging LGBTIQ ay napakalaki at napakalawak. Ano kaya ang mararamdaman natin kung tayo ay tinatrato na parang hindi kapwa-tao? Ano po ang sasabihin natin sa isang bata, isang anak, kapatid, kasama, kaibigan, katrabaho, na minamata, kinukutya, sinasaktan dahil lamang siya ay kak kakaiba sa karamihan. Hahayaan na lang ba natin silang masaktan at maghirap? 
Dahil po sa dinis diskriminasyon at sa kawalan ng pagtanggap, mas mataas po ang level ng depression at anxiety ng mga LGBTIQ. Mas mataas po ang level ng self-harm o pananakit sa sarili. At napakataas po ng level ng suicide o pagpapakamatay. Ngayon po ay babasahin ko po ang panimulang uh, statement po na nagmumula sa mga sentro ng gender equality ng Saint Scholastica, Miriam College at Ateneo de Manila University bilang mga katolikong pa paaralan. Sa diwa ng ating pananampalatayang katoliko at iba't ibang paniniwala ng sambayan ng Pilipino, niyayakap namin ang sangkatauhan ng may respeto at malasakit. Sa paraang minahal ng Diyos ang lahat, isinasabuhay nating mga katolikong Pilipino ang kanyang banal na pagmamahal. Ipinaaabot namin ang aming pasasalamat at suporta sa ating mga senador na nagpakita ng respeto at malasakit sa lahat ng Pilipino upang wala nang makaranas ng diskriminasyon dahil sa kanilang sexual na orientasyon, gender identity, at gender expression. Naninindigan kami kasama ang ating mga senador na pinipiling tuparin ang kanilang tungkulin na protektahan ng lahat ng Pilipino mula sa diskriminasyon. Dahil habang hindi pa natin naaabot ang pagkakapantay-pantay sa lahat ng bahagi ng buhay, ang Estado ang dapat magtaguyod ng pagkakapantay-pantay. Dahil ang bawat Pilipino ay may sexual na orientasyon, gender identity, at gender expression. Habang kinikilala natin ang iba't ibang anyo ng pagtanggi sa karapatan o marginalization ng mga mamamayan, kinikilala ng SOGI Equality Bill ang stigma laban sa mga taong may SOGI na nagiging biktima ng pagkasuklam, pambabastos, karahasan, pangungutya, kawalan ng pagtanggap at pagrespeto, at iba't ibang anyo ng diskriminasyon sa trabaho, eskwelahan, bahay, pampublikong lugar. Kinikilala ng bill ang epekto ng ganitong stigma at diskriminasyon. At nananawagan kami sa ating mga senador na tugunan ang pangangailangan ng ating mga mamamayan upang mabuhay ang lahat ng may dignidad at ng may respeto. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din po, Dr. Ofreneo. And now I'd like to call from Miriam College, uh, Dr. Tessa De Vela. Ayusan lang po namin ang blocking namin. Marami pong salamat, Madam Chair. Um, salamat po sa lahat. Alam ko, uh, kutom na tayong lahat. So, kain lang po. <laughs> uh, yung babasahin ko po ay actually a continuation ng statement na binasa ni Dr. Mir Ofreneo. Kasi nga, tatlo po kaming signatory dito. Si Sister Mary John from St. Scholastica, si Dr. Mir Ofreneo from Ateneo de Manila, and myself, uh, from Miriam College. As academe-based advocacy centers for women's empowerment, gender equality, and gender diversity, we urge the Senate of this 18th Congress to pass the SOGI Equality Bill. To pass the SOGI Bill is to recognize there is stigma, discrimination, and violence against LGBTIQ people to recognize that as citizens, LGBTIQ people are entitled to legal protection, to recognize that LGBTIQ people are people who, like anyone else, have the right to be respected by the public, have the desire to love and to be loved, and have the capacity to uphold the rule of law to tell schools that academic freedom does not include the freedom to discriminate on the basis of a person's soji, or to teach wrong things for that matter. 
to tell religious organizations that freedom of religion, ex religious expression, does not include the freedom of hate speech. Passing this bill means the legislators of this 18th Congress will serve the cause of justice, will build a caring Philippine society, and will call on all Filipino citizens of diverse faiths to love thy LGBTIQ neighbor. Let this be the great opportune moment for the 18th Congress to show love, respect, and compassion for LGBTIQ people who are also citizens of this country whose contribution to nation building should be recognized in full. So, yung sinasabi pong kung may pagtingin ng LGBTIQ people ay masyadong sensitibo, siguro po dahil napaka-insensitive ng ating lipunan sa ating LGBTIQ people. So baka ang kailangan natin is to, not to move from sensitivity to maturity, pero tingnan natin ng, ang pagiging sensitibo, sensitivity as maturity, to, mo, to be a mature society, a mature country, a mature, a mature people. Maraming salamat po. Maraming salamat din po, Dr. Tessa. Uh, now I'd like to uh, move on to uh, and call to speak Ms. Kaila Tibayan uh, of uh, PUP Kasarinlan. Thank you, Madam Chair, and uh, good afternoon to everyone in the room. In discussing the SOG Equality Bill, uh, I will be speaking in behalf of my organization. Uh, we put grave importance to our Constitution's clause on the equal protection of the laws. However, it comes very vague when there are human rights violations committed, uh, committed on the grounds of a person's SOGI. This creates a ripple of unreported and dismissed cases on such violations that makes justice unattainable and creates such a hostile environment for the community to live and foster in the society. We argue that much of the claims laid out by those not in favor of the bill is rooted in the lack of understanding between the concepts of sexual orientation, gender identity, and expression, with their notion that all of this is encapsulated in the discourse of homosexuality. We believe that the purpose of the bill is to not only protect and secure the rights of those in the LGBTQIA plus uh, community, but to those with unrepresented diverse sexual orientations, identities, expressions, and sex characteristics. But more than that, the bill highlights intersectionality, an important feature for when we talk about, for when we want to talk about absolute human rights for all within the intersections of race, class, the disabled, children, and the poor. The organization believes that the right to live without discrimination is not a privilege, and to attain, and to attain equal rights means giving a platform and an amplified mic for those who are fighting to, to be seen equal under the eyes of the law, to seek equal, seek, uh, equal opportunities in the workplace, Access to healthcare, housing, and property is not a special right, and neither is the protection from discrimination on the basis of SOGI. The passage of the SOGI Equality Bill also means ensuring the protection of our own diverse queer children who are in vulnerable states. Taking in from the organization's experience with school-based discrimination on the basis of gender identity and expression, Documents and certificates for graduation were held back if a candidate does not prescribe to the appropriate haircut and hair color, following the conventions of a proper grooming. Apart from this, similar cases have erupted in many schools in the country, with children being subjected to a publicly humiliating haircut if they fail to follow the appropriate measure. The SOGI Equality Bill not only aims to elevate the struggles and protect the rights of the LGBTQ plus community in its broad spectrum, 
It aims to address the protection of children from discrimination and other forms of harassment on the basis of gender expression on such grounds mentioned earlier. With its passage supporting provisions inside the Department of Education's Child Protection Policy. On, um, on a final note, the organization strongly believes that the bill will not only aim to provide legal and national protection against discrimination of the community, but challenge the existing norms and beliefs we have in the context of gender and sexuality. This lack of understanding and prolonged biased attitude of our country on the complexity of two areas contribute much to the idea that it is fixed and binary when our preconceived notion is outdated, which is an which is an apparent contrast to our claim of an evolving society, a belief that harms further the community to exist harmoniously in our community. Therefore, we call for the passage of the Soji Equality Bill. Thank you, Ms. Kaila. And now from uh, Bulsu Bahagahari, uh, Ms. Queenie Bato, you have the floor. Um, good afternoon, po. I am Queenie Jokos Bato, a proud bisexual cisgender woman and currently the Punong Raya of Bulsu Bahaghari. It is heartbreaking to see how many of us had already suffered while the bill is still being left out by many people who still can't understand why we fight. That the long wait already took so many lives, hopes, and dreams, and we can stomach many more of us to be taken out just for the world to finally hear us out. Bulsu Bahaghari was established because of a trans woman who was not allowed to enter the school premises. It was during the midterm week when our founder encountered that incident. Also, numbers of dropouts from the university kept increasing because, of, because they are being forced to cut their hair and prohibited to express their gender expression. Kung makakapasok man po sila sa loob ng university, madalas pinapahiya sila ng mga professors or worse, hindi sila pinapapasok sa kanilang mga klase. Madam Chair? Uh, excuse I, me please, uh, Senator Nancy. Uh, can I just ask, can you name the school? Bulacan State University po. Hindi, as I, di ba kasi nabanggit mo na parang hindi sila pinapapasok kasi dahil yung buhok, na, buhok nila. Um, yung Bulacan State, isa sila Apa. sa... Um, it, um, what I'm saying po is the... Short history of Bulsu Bahaghari din po. Kasi dun sa statement mo kanina, you mentioned na parang may mga eskwela ha, may mga university na hindi nagpapapasok. I'm na talking about Bulsu, uh, Bulsu po. So Bulacan State yun? Apo. Bulacan State pa lang, but are you, may alam ka ba na iba pang mga eskwela ha, na hindi nagpapapasok? Uh, wala po, Senator. So, sa Bulacan State? Apo. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Please proceed. Um, Ayun po, if hindi sila magpapagupit or hindi sila ayusin yung, um, if hindi sila magpapagupit, ang choice nila is pwede silang mag-drop sa klase or lumipat na lang ng ibang university. Pioneers of the organization use those records to establish Bulso Bahaghari and today we are empowered to fight discrimination and become a safe place to everyone. Why am I saying this? I want you to know that Bulsu Bahaghari was made not just because we want an LGBT organization inside the university. It was made because of the alarming effects of discrimination that the students from my university experienced three years ago. So do we still, dis um, do we still experience discrimination today? Yes po, meron pa rin pong mga discrimination cases inside the university. So we say the time is now and equality now. Just like the popular line, if not now, when, and if not us, who? And we're more than glad that, the, that we are the embodiment of that, that we chose to use all our hardships to be a fuel for us to fight harder, to dream greater, and to love stronger. I also want to call the attention of Senator Joel Villanueva on behalf of the first LGBTQ plus organization in the province of Bulacan, Bulsu Bahaghari, and as a Kapwa Bulakenyo po, I am asking for your help to support the passage of the Soji Equality Bill. There are a million reasons why we should experience equality now. But the very reason why we're standing here by all the colors in our flags is already re enough reason for the world to understand that we exist because we are all human after all. Thank you po. Thank you then, Miss Queenie. 
And now uh, I'd like to call uh, KJ Lorenzana at yung uh, mami nyo. Uh, KJ, uh, magandang hapon. Salamat, uh, andito ka pa since this morning. No? Thank, Thank you, you for joining us. Um, nais nyo bang, mo bang ibahagi sa aming komite anong naging karanasan mo nung ikaw ay grade 12? Apo. Yes, please, you have the floor. Uh, ako po si KJ Lorenzana, 20 years old po. And I, identif I identified myself as a trans man. I was discriminated po nung nasa high school ako, grade 12, sa Basa Irvays National High School. Nag-decide po akong magsuot ng panglalaking uniform. Nung papasok na po, kasi po, nung, yung suot ko nun is pants and plain t-shirt. Hindi pa po kasi, hindi pa po kasi napatahi yung polo ko, kaya bibili po sana ako ng polo sa office namin. Kasi po, sa office, nag-available po yung mga uniforms kapag hindi pa gawa yung other na pinatahi namin sa mga tailor. So, nakita po ako ng guidance counselor namin doon. Bakit, tinanong po ako na, bakit ganyan daw po yung suot ko? Bakit ako nakapang lalaki? Alam daw po ba ng mga, ng mga tita ko? Kasi po, may kamag-anak po ako doon sa school namin. May kamag-anak po ako, isa pong tita, isa pong pinsan. Parehas din po silang professor. Tinanong po ako kung, Kung alam daw po ba, kung may consent daw po ba, sabi ko po may consent po sa magulang ko lang, sa, sa mama ko po. Kaya, ayun po, sa, bibili lang po sana ako ng polo para complete uniform na po ako the whole week. Tapos sabi po ng guidance counselor namin dun sa, sa lalaking nag-a-assist ng releasing of uniforms, sabi, kuya, wag mo tong pagbibilhan kasi... Hindi 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 to hindi pwede. Hindi bawal daw po ba, bawal daw po akong pagbilihan ng gusto kong uniform kasi hindi daw po yun po pwede. Kaya, tapos po may mga dumating din po na, na teachers na tas kinausap nila ako that that moment. Pinapakiusapan nila ako na baguhin ko na bukas bumalik ako nang nakapalda na. Sabi ko po hindi ko na po kasi kaya. Hindi ko na po gusto, hindi na po ako masaya. Kasi grade 7 to grade 11, sinuot ko naman po yung paldan. Nag, nagmamakaawa lang po ako sa kanila na one year pagbigyan nila ako magsuot ng panglalaking uniform, maranasan ko man lang bago ako mag-graduate. Pero hindi po nila ako pinakinggan. Mas nagalit pa po sila sa akin. That, that moment wala na po akong magawa. Hindi ko rin po alam kung may laban po ba ako or... or Susuko ko na lang, kaya umiyak na lang po ako that, at, that, at that place po. Yung ginawa ko po, bumalik po ako sa classroom, ginawa ko, naghingi po ako ng advice sa mga klase ko. Sabi, humanap daw po ako ng tulong sa akin online. Kaya ngayon pa, lumapit po ako sa Lagablab LGBT Network po. Kung ano, kung ano po ba yung pwede kong gawin, kung may laban po ba kami, or dapat po bang sundin ko na lang yung gusto ng mga professors ng, mga, ng school para sa akin. Kasi hindi ko naman po din alam kung tama, ba po, tama po ba na sundin ko yung nasa loob ko o sundin ko po sila. So kinabukasan po, pumasok pa rin po ako. Nag-message na po ako sa kanila noon that Yung kinabukasan, kinabukasan po, nag-message na ako sa, sa LGBTQ plus community about sa issue ko po. So, pinayuan po nila ako na ituloy ko pong magsuot ng panglalaking uniform. So, nagsuot po ako. Plug ceremony po namin, kinausap po ng guidance counselor namin yung advisor ko. sa so, pabulong po para kayo nilang sa, pa, pa, ayaw iparating ng guidance counselor sa akin agad mismo. Gusto niya po kasi yung, yung below niya yung magsasabi sa akin, hindi po siya mismo. Sabi po sa akin nung advisor ko, kapag pumasok pa ako bukas ng nakapang lalaki, oh, nakapang lalaki po, 
pants or polo or t-shirt, hindi daw po nila ako papapasukan sa mga klase ko or ipapaharang po nila ako sa gate. Kaya sabi ko po, na, wala, na, wala po akong magawa that moment kasi di ko rin po alam, student lang po ako at guidance yung mga kalaban ko po that moment. Umiyak po ako sa mismong ceremony. Tapos kinausap ko po yung advisor ko na kung pwede, ipagtanggol niya po ako sa guidance sa guidance counselor namin. Pero wala Tapos rin anong ginawa siyang, ng teacher mo nung humingi ka ng tulong sa kanya? Wala rin po siyang nagawa. Dinamayan niya na lang po ako dun sa mismong, pinag, sa mismong pag-uusap namin. Kasi hindi niya din po daw po kaya kasi bago pa lang po siya. Kakasalta niya lang po sa, sa school namin. Baka pag tinulungan niya daw po ako, matanggal siya sa trabaho. So, ulit-ulit lang po yun nangyari. Kasi po yung guidance counselor namin, teacher ko po siya sa pagsusuri at sa pagsusuri ng iba't ibang teksto. So, every time po na makikita niya ako, every time na mamimit niya ako sa classroom, Tititigan niya po ako ng masama mula ulo hanggang paa. Lalabitan niya po ako na, parang bakit anong ginagawa mo dito? Bakit nandito ka na naman? Parang ganun po. Siyempre yung mararamdaman ko po, para akong minamalit na wala po ba akong karapatan na, 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 na pumasok dito dahil, dahil lang sa saot ko. So ayun po, ulit-ulit lang po 'yun. Every hanggang lumipas po 'yung isang isang buwan, akala ko po okay na. Akala ko po hinayaan na nila ako until July 13, 2017. Principal ko na po 'yung nakita sa akin. Nakatalikod po ako kasi galing po ako sa office, may kukunin po sana akong form. Sabi po sa akin ng principal, "Bakit ganito? Bakit ka ano 'yang suot mo?" Lalaki ka ba? Bakit ka bakit ka nakapanglalaki? Sabi ko po, yes po ma'am, lalaki po ako. Paano ka naging lalaki? Sabi niya po sa akin. Halika nga dito, kapain kita. Sa lating kita kapag may nakapa ako sa iyo, sige lalaki ka. Halika dito, lumapit ka. Ako po, syempre student po lang po ako, hindi ko po, di ko rin po kayang lumaban pa that moment. Anong naramdaman mo? Anong reaksyon mo nung gano'n ang pananalita niya sa iyo? Pinigilan ko lang pong maiyak kasi marami pong tao din. Marami rin pong student na nandun. Nakakahiya naman pong lumaban o sagutin yung principal. Musta yung mga classmates mo nung nasaksihan ba nila ito o naikwento mo ba sa kanila? Opo, may nakasaksi po. Kaso po, sinabi po niya dun sa mga klase ko na bakit kayo nakatingin? Parang pinapaalis niya po kasi dapat kami lang po mag-uusap, ganun. Pero sa mga kaklase mo, okay ba sa kanila or hindi rin nila gusto na pumasok ka, suot yung uniforme? Okay po sa kanila sa kasi sabi po sa akin ng mga klase ko, ever since po nang nagsusuot ako ng panglalaking uniform, mas naging mas confident po ako, mas mas naging participation, nag, mas naging participative ako sa klase, mas naging masaya eh, mas nakakagalaw ako, mas, marami, mas lalong luma, rumami yung mga naging kaibigan ko. Kasi malaya na ako eh, nakita po nilang malaya na ako. Kaya sabi nila kahit magalit yung principal, sige, tuloy mo lang yan. Kasi, kasi guma, magaling ka naman sa klase. Mas gumaling ka pa nga nung nagsuot ka ng ganyan, sabi nila. Nakapagreklamo ka ba or kayo ni mama mo sa DepEd? Op. Opo, nag, nagsabi po ako na sa principal, nung mismo pag-uusap po namin, kasi po, before pa po yun, di ba, may, may sinabi na sa akin na ipapaharang ako sa gate and tinitignan na ako ng masama. Sabi ko po sa principal, sana nga po magko-complain, magpa-file kami ng complaint gamit yung Deped Order Number 40 about child policy, bullying and criticism. Sabi niya po, bakit ano po? Sabi po sa akin ng principal ko, hindi naman daw po nila ako binubuli kasi hindi naman daw po nila ako ka-level. Yung bullying daw po para sa kanila is principal to principal, teacher to teacher, and student to student lang daw po. Hindi daw po nila ako ka-level, hindi daw po nila ako ni-criticize, hindi daw po nila ako binubuli. 
hindi yata nabalitaan ng principal nyo na meron ng Safe Spaces Act na mas nagpapalawig pa sa anti-sexual harassment po. law. Pero ano pong nakapagreklamo nga ba sa DEPE? Then anong nangyari kung nakapagreklamo kayo? Nakapagreklamo sa po pero wala rin pong nangyari. Parang nabasura lang din po. Nagsorry na lang po sila sa akin. Personally, umiyak po sila. Parang wala rin, na rin, wala rin, wala rin po akong magawa kasi syempre, baka po meron din silang connections doon. Pero maraming salamat sa pagdala mo ngayon, KJ, at sa pagkwento uh, mo sa committee ito, sa lahat ng resource persons ng iyong karanasan. And of course, hindi ka nag-iisa going through that experience kasama mo yung mama mo. Opo. Opo. Ma'am, pwede rin bang ma matanong kayo si Ma'am Teresita Tinabunan? Yes, ma'am. Kayo po yung sumama kay KJ, ano po, noong pumunta yes, sa principal? Opo, ma'am. Sa principal's office? Yes, ma'am. So, uh, pero ano pong unang reaksyon nyo rin po? Anong unang naramdaman nyo nung malaman yung naging karanasan ni KJ dun sa school? Uh, sinuportahan ko po siya, ma'am, kasi anak ko po siya. E nakakatuwa nga po, uh, ma'am Teresita, kasi... Bilang magulang, sinuportahan niyo po si KJ. Yes, Pero maaari niyo bang kahit maikli sabihin sa komite, ano pong naging uh, pakiramdam niyo rin at reaksyon nung nalaman ni KJ na siya ay trans man? At nung sinabi sa inyo, nung nalaman niyo pong trans man siya, ano pong pakiramdam niyo? Mga bata pa lang po siya, alam ko na po siya ganito. Kaya tinanggap ko po siya simula noon hanggang ngayon. Sabi niyo po, bata pa lang po siya. Yes, Ilang taon po siya nung kayo bilang magulang nalaman po ninyo? Two years old, ma'am. Two years old? Yes, ma'am. So, hin hindi rin pala masyadong nakakagulat o hindi yes, shocking nung siya ay nagdesisyong magdamit lalaki? Kasi yes, two years old pala, alam niyo na po na ganun yes, yung kanyang Pinakat identity. Yes, ma'am. Pinakat po yung niya. Pinapahabol ko lang po sa barbero. <laughs> Nagdadamit po siya ng pang lalaki. Ayaw niya po yung binibili kong mga damit. So, nung pagpasok niya po sa school, sakalang siya kailangang magdesisyon ng ilang taon yes, na magdamit nung pang-uniforme, pang-babae. Yes, ma'am. Actually po, ma'am, nung grade 6 po siya, nag-graduate po siya ng nakapanglalaking pang-graduation. Kasi pinayagan po kami ng teacher niya. Kasi ayaw niya po mag-attend. So, kung hindi sana siya nakapagsuot nung... Uh, nababagay sa kanyang graduation uniform, ay mamimiss pa po niya yes, yung importanteng okasyon yeah, iyon. Pinayagan po siya ng advisor class niya po, ma'am, na mag-attend. Kasi sabi niya, sige, pumunta ka, akong bahala sa iyo. So, pwede, posible pa lang sa lower level ng ating basic education ay may mga mas yes. mulat na at bukas yes, at uh, supportive na mga educators natin. So, kung ganun po yung pagkakilala nyo rin kay KJ mula nung yes, dalawang taong gulang hanggang magtapos sa grade 6, graduation, hanggang pumasok sa high school, ano pong naramdaman nyo nung kwinento niya sa inyo yung pangungutya at yung lalo na yung ginawa ng principal, no? yung pagharas talaga sa kanya? Nasaktan po, ma'am. Kaya sinamahan ko po siya sa school. Kasi tanong ko po sa tumulong sa amin kung may laban po ba ako. Siya. Sabi po nila meron. Kaya sinamahan ko po siya. Pumunta po kami ng DepEd. Pagtapos po namin ng Barangay High School, diretso po kami ng DepEd. Kaso wala po nangyari yung reklamo ko po. <laughs> so dala niyo po yung kopya ng reklamo niyo sa yes, DepEd. Na-receive naman po nila. Yes ma'am, na-receive po nila. Pero hindi po ako pinatawag. Siguro po, yes, uh, Senator Nancy. Meron ho bang for, formal na reply ang DepEd dun sa reklamo niyo? Simula nung ma'am nang pinasa namin, pinag, pin, nireceive po nila, pero hindi na po, sabi po nila, tatawagan daw po ako sa number ko. Hanggang ngayon po yung number ko yung pa rin. <laughs> Ayun, Madam Chair, meron naman tayong representative from DepEd. Thank you, Senator Nancy, and thank you also to uh, Director Lopez. Uh, so, Ma'am uh, Ma Teresita, hinihi po ng uh, BHROD ng DepEd yung kopya po ng sulat niyo. So, tutulungan niyo po silang mag-follow up sa kanilang reklamo. Thank you so much, Director Lopez. Yes, Senator yes, Nancy. Madam Chair, nakakalungkot lang kasi, di ba, para meron na nga tayong existing na mga batas na pwedeng uh, nilang takbuhan. Kaso lang, uh, katulad ng mga naririnig natin sa iba't ibang hearing dito sa Senado, laging meron talagang failure pagdating dun sa 
implementation eh. Um, nandiyan na yung mga pwede nating uh, batas na pagprotekta sa atin. Kaso lang, pagdating nga dun sa remedy on how to uh, make sure na nai-implement ito, eh mukhang dun na naman tayo may pagkukulang. Point very well taken, Ms. Nancy. Yes, uh, Ms. Naomi Fontanos from Ganda, Filipinas. Um, Senator Binay, just to respond po, um, even if yes, DepEd has an existing policy of child protection, the principal in the, th that the case of KJ actually misinterpreted it, saying that it does not cover him. So, oh, the, mere the fact policy that he has, that he has, is already for me a form of child abuse. Opo, opo, and there are existing batas that yes, you violence against women and children. Na I think covered pa si KJ nung batas na iyon. Opo, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I understand. Still, po. hindi, hindi, hindi nag-work pa din yung batas kasi nga, paulit-ulit nagiging problema natin sa implementation. And I think, isa yan sa fear ko with this uh, bill, yung magiging problema na naman natin sa implementation. Kasi nga, uh, parang nagiging norm na yung ganong problema. And, Ewan ko, siguro sa PNP, DOJ, hindi ko alam kung meron kayong yung inputs dun sa dami na pinasa naming batas. Either hindi ini-implement or katulad nga nung hearing natin dun sa GCTA, nagkakaroon naman ng wrong interpretation of the law. And apparently, Senator Nancy, as uh, Ms. Naomi was pointing out, this may have been a case and we're hoping for the oversight of DepEd dahil if a follow-up niling reklamo ni na Ma'am Teresita at ni KJ, this may have been a case of wrong interpretation. It may also, habang naghahanap tayo ng uh, tamang mga batas talaga para protektahan, uh, tanggalin ng diskriminasyon based on SOGI at protektahan ng lahat laban sa ganyang diskriminasyon, maybe there are also gaps uh, in, in the laws that are operating now. And then it will become a challenge if and when we pass this SOGI Equality Bill into law na imp implemented ng maayos. Yes, Ms. Naomi, once more from uh -huh. you, and then we'll go back to uh, Ms. Uh, Madam Chair, just a fact of the case. Um, in AJ's case, he was already 18 when the, when the harassment happened. So he was no longer covered by the anti-child abuse law. Part pa rin siya, covered pa rin siya dun sa violence against women and children. Being a woman. I mean, we have to accept the definition. Kasi, di ba, sa existing definition, covered pa rin siya ng violence against women and children because biologically, woman pa din siya eh. Uh, yung mga existing nating batas against women, pwede pa rin, covered pa rin siya nun. So, uh, Attorney Jazz, briefly, and then I'll uh, go back once more for a last word from uh, um, Ma'am Teresita. Unfortunately, hindi po siya covered ng VAUSI because VAUSI only contemplates intimate relations between the perpetrator and the survivor. So in this case, the principal and KJ are not having intimate relations. So <laughs> there is no way that the VAUSI will cover it. Uh, just there. So thank you. Uh, uh, yes, uh, one last briefly from uh, Dr. Tessa. Thank and you. then I, I'll ask... Ma'am Teresita and KJ, just to close their story. Thank you, Madam yes, Chair. Uh, just a quick Dr. injection. Uh, because if I think the point also is, uh, Senator Nancy Binay, uh, is if there was a SOGI law, a SOGI equality law, hindi po tayo aabot na magreklamo sa DepEd. Hindi siya po sana naharas bilang isang trans man. So I think uh, it's not a... a, a, a I beg to disagree okay. kasi we already have a Magna Carta for women, but women are still being harassed. She's you, the bill will not protect us. Yeah. Um, he's it a man. Not. Yeah. It will yes, not. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But I think the Saudi equality bill, if a law, would be about awareness. Uh, the Magna Carta for women is for women, but uh, in this case, no, but she's not a woman. He is a man. No. And ano po, I, I think ang point po is public awareness. I agree that the comprehensive bill, for example, uh, can uh, supplement, can, uh, but the SOGI equality bill, if law, will reinforce. 
mere fact na may criminal liability yung batas, we assume na magkakaroon ng complainant against harassment. Kaya nga nagkaroon ng uh, criminal liability. So I don't agree with your statement na kung may SOGI bill na, hindi na kailangan mag-file ng cases na ganito yung nature nung, nung event, di ba? Magpa-file pa rin po kung mangyari, pero na, baka ma-prevent na yung pangyayari ng ganon. Kasi meron na kaming mga eskwelahan, susunod na po kami. Kasi sinabihan na kami ng, ng, ano, ng, lip, ng uh, uh, estado, magkakaroon na ng mga awareness na we have to follow the law. Pero sa ngayon po, wala po tayong ganong uh, batas. Uh, at this point, maybe to also add further clarity to the issue being uh, discussed, uh, another resource person, could I ask you to comment on this? Uh, she has to leave because of a meeting that she has to attend. Could I please ask uh, from the Commission on Human Rights, Commissioner Karen Dumpit, uh, if you would have uh, a comment on this, on mm -hmm. uh, actual legal gaps in mm -hmm. terms of uh, pro uh, preventing and prohibiting discrimination and giving protection uh, to uh, children and adults as well, to gi giving protection to adults on the basis of SOGI mm -hmm. na ma uh, may or may not be already provided for by existing law. So please, uh, from the CHR, Commissioner Dumpit. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Um, uh, thank you for giving us again uh, the opportunity to be here and engage with the committee. Um, just to reiterate, of course, uh, that the Commission supports the enactment of the law that would protect persons with diverse SOGI, um, particularly the LGBTIQ community from discrimination. And this is just one of the lived experiences um, uh, that uh, we get to have a glimpse of no? uh, in terms of um, trying to address a particular issue. Um, uh, just to say that there are some remedies available right now. And um, uh, that was actually articulated by Senator Nancy Binay. However, we feel that this is not enough because even while in this particular case, we were not aware of this and now that we are aware of your case, KJ, we will help monitor and coordinate with the Department of Education um, to see uh, whether um, uh, this actually, this case is under their jurisdiction or if we can file other cases under existing law. Thank um, you for uh, that, Commissioner. Of course, um, uh, there are existing remedies, including in the Commission on Human Rights. We can launch an investigation um, similar to what we have done and are currently undertaking um, in the Gretchen Diaz case. Uh, we have under um, the Magna Carta of Women, we are uh, a gender ombud, and we have Protocol 3, which actually instructs us on the handling of cases um, uh, involving persons with diverse SOGI. Um, we have also current ordinances that imposes um, uh, certain um, um, actions, um, but also imposes fines and um, imprisonment, particularly in Quezon City, no? we have that and other cities. Um, however, the law can further instruct, can further um, uh, elaborate, can further encourage and um, um, uh, create an enabling environment for um, awareness and openness. So the law can also call for action. And these actions can include a correction of discriminatory behavior through, for instance, affirmative action, through orientations and training, uh, probably through mediation as well. Um, uh, there can be encouraging or um, directing um, institutions to have a diversity or inclusion policy, um, uh, and many others. No? Um, so we feel that this particular um, uh, law will help directly mandate institutions to be more open and inclusive to all persons with diverse SOGI and can provide specific guidance um, and have a recourse, a, um, an actual perhaps um, a direct map on how to seek redress 
uh, when it comes to this particular issue of um, uh, discrimination based on SOGI. Um, just to say also that we are in solidarity with our partners, particularly the Stop the Discrimination Coalition, um, and also our partners in, um, um, in the human rights advocacy. And um, just to say, finally, that um, uh, we reiterate our support for all measures, including this one, that address um, uh, discrimination. Um, but in this case, we do support um, the me this measure uh, to address um, discrimination, including on issues of employment and associated rights, like in this case, education, um, uh, on the basis of diverse SOGI. And we believe and stand by the values of human rights that we al are born free and equal in dignity and rights. We are prepared to engage um, the committee and um, uh, also offer the commission to be part of the uh, technical working group that may be um, created um, uh, through this uh, hearing. Marami pong salamat. Marami salamat din po, Commissioner Karen, also for that offer uh, of assisting in uh, any TWG that the committee might call. So bago kung, since nabanggit nyo rin yung mga ordinance, ordinances, bago tayo dumako sa Cebu, gusto ko lang muling pasalamatan si KJ sa iyong uh, storya bilang isang trans man at uh, bilang kapwa nanay kay Ma'am Teresita, lalong-lalo na po marami pong salamat sa inyong pagdalo dito at pagbahagi. Uh, alam naman po natin, hindi lahat ng mga magulang na mga LGBT children ay tulad ninyo. So, mabuhay po kayo sa inyong uh, pagsuporta. At yung, ang, uh, what comes through naman sa akin po talaga ay yung pagmamahal nyo talaga kay KJ. Yun, common sa ating lahat ng mga nanay o lahat ng mga magulang para sa ating mga anak. So, salamat po sa inyong mag-ina. Um, so, now I'd like to move on to uh, the uh, convenor, executive director of uh, the Cebu uh, Anti-Discrimination Council, uh, Ms. Magdalena Robinson. You have the floor. Thank you, Ma'am. Sorry, Thank Cebu Anti-Discrimination Commission. Yes, please proceed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good afternoon to everyone. Um, I'm going to read um, a position paper for the Cebu United Rainbow LGBT Sector since I'm not with the uh, Cebu City Government um, at the moment, so uh, as of now, so. This position paper provides documented discriminatory experiences against LGBTs in Cebu and to uh, support the passage of the SOGI Equality Bill. So this is the background. In, this, in 17th October 2012, Cebu City uh, passed its uh, Comprehensive Anti-Discrimination Ordinance prohibiting discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity among others. So we do have two existing ordinance, um, the Mother Ordinance, um, which was passed in 2012, and the ordinance uh, constituting uh, the commission. So um, the commission was convened in 2017, and it was operational after um, uh, I assumed the position in 20, uh, September 2017. Um, the IRR was... Um, signed by the mayor in, in June of 2018. So this is the background. Um, we, we do have the ordinance because of these experiences. In 2008, Cebu made news from a controversial medical procedure where a perfume canister was extracted from a patient identified as Danilo, not his real name became the subject of public humiliation after the medical staff allegedly made fun of him when the patient was subjected to a delicate procedure on January 3. And such, um, there were cases filed in the Ombudsman, but it was settled. Um, in 2011, there are also three incidences of pellet gun attacks um, in different parts of the city. And uh, there were 13 um, victims that was uh, shot by pellet guns and uh, reported that to authorities as well as to uh, existing LGBT organizations. And in, in the same year, uh, December, um, a transgender was um, brutally killed in a mountain barangay in the city. So that compelled um, uh, the LGBT community as well other sectors 
as well as Cebu City Government, Cebu City Council to pass the ordinance. So Sorry, Ms. Magda. How long has the uh, ordinance been in place? Since 2008? Uh, the the ordinance was passed in 2012, okay, sorry, but then it was it was um, convened in 20, 2017. So actually operational for just the past couple of years. Yes. So as um, as a sitting officer in charge that time, the highest number of reported um, and complaints lodged in the commission um, is more on with the haircut policy. So there are um, actually students from six schools that came in batches to actually transgender and di diverse um, non-conforming students that came to the commission and lodged their complaints um, for their schools because uh, they were prevented to enter the school because they are not non-compliant to the haircut policy. So what the commission did is that we intervened through um, um, sending a letter that the, the Cebu City government has already an anti-discrimination ordinance, citing the definition of the ordinance as well as um, discrimination on the basis of SOGI. But the, the problem there is that we cannot compel the establishment because there's no clear uh, provision on preventing the um, schools on, on, um, on haircut policy as well as cross-dressing. So that's why we just, uh, we are just saying that- um, Madam Chair, public yes, school ba or private school? Um, public and private schools po. Yes. Both, yes. So, so would it seem that the anti-discrimination ordinance is enough to prevent discrimination or it is still not enough to prevent discrimination? Meron ba kayong, may assessment ba ang council as of the time that you left it? Actually, the. The directive of the council at that time, since um, it was uh, convened first, is that the, pri the first priority is the information dissemination of all the stakeholders for the, so, so that they can comply with what's in the, the ordinance. So that's why at that time there's an um, um, or sensitization programs that were given to stakeholders. So, and um, it's just not clear with, re with regards to cross-dressing and, um, and haircut policy because more likely in the perspective of me as sitting the officer in charge, I do recognize the student's um, agency of autonomy, their, cap their capacity in decision-making of their identities as well as their pursuit in happiness vis-a-vis -vis the, their um, access to rights, to education, employment and other rights. So there's that challenge now in amending the ordinance so that it will be specifically uh, or explicitly says that um, having um, or policing gender uh, identity expressions and sexual orientation uh, hampers or tramples uh, the decision making of um, students. So, Ms. Magda, uh, and Senator Nancy is also asking, could the committee please ask for a copy of the Cebu Anti-Discrimination Ordinance? Um, and, but uh, uh, even after you um, update it, do you think it will be enough to stop discrimination in Cebu City? Or do you think it will not be enough yet? Do you have a, maybe a projected uh, assessment um, or I a projection? Think it, it I, I, it, it does not prevent discrimination. Discrimination really happens in, in our society, but it ensures a legal remedy that is, um, that is uh, provided for those who want redress from the incident. So um, we make it available. Um, the government must ensure that we have these mechanisms at, in, at place for redress. It does not mean that we, we go to the courts directly uh, the jurisdiction of the commission is to discipline the establishments who do not comply with the with the or existing laws and uh, policies of the local government. Um, the jurisdiction um, for individual to individual is referred to the Katarungan Pambarangay. Just one more question, Ms. Magda, before we move to our next resource person. Uh, speaking of establishments, was there ever a case in Cebu City that uh, a man dressed up pretending to be a trans woman dressed up in women's clothes uh, to go into ladies' rooms to harass 
uh, straight, cisgender, heterosexual women. Was there ever uh, a case there? We haven't received any complaints in that nature. There is none. Madam Senator Nancy. Mer meron ho ba kayo na penalize na establishment? Um, wala pa because um, the, uh, the mandate of the commission is to mediate the dispute with the establishment as well as with the individual. So dun sa, ano yun? Ano? Walang, walang ganong kasama dun sa ordinance nyo na may penalty clause? Oh, we, we don't have a penalty clause under the local government code. What was the penalty? Um, not less than 1,000, not more than 5,000. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Senator Nancy. And thank you very much, Ms. Bagda. Uh, I'd like to call, because uh, thank you to, to this uh, resource person for staying until this time. He has to leave already. I'd like to call from, from the Intercessors for the Philippines, uh, Pastor Ko. Yes, Pastor Augusto Ko. You have the floor. Uh, Honorable Senators, uh, good afternoon po. I'm representing uh, Bishop Dan Balais of Intercessors for the Philippines. I came all the way from Pangasinan. I'm representing also uh, IFP or Intercessors for the Philippines, Pangasinan chapter. Uh, there's nothing wrong with the word discrimination. You can use it uh, negatively or positively, either by distinction, discernment, or unfair treatment. So, is it discriminatory whenever you say big, bigger, biggest? Uh, in the same way, the Philippine Constitution protects every human individual, regardless of color of skin, religion, creed, culture, even LGBT. Uh, but our human rights are being uh, enshrined already under the Bill of Rights of Article 3. However, the, the, the uh, SOGI bill, uh, we will be saying no for the SOGI bill because we have already the Bill of Rights that protects the right of every human individual. Uh, we say no because uh, the bill is discriminatory by itself. It is discriminatory to the Bill of Rights, social justice, Filipino family, and Filipino marriage. It is, in fact, an attack against humans. Article 14, Section 3, Paragraph 2 and 3, Article 8, Section 16, Article 15, Section 1 and 3. I'm thinking whether this is an encroaching invasion against the sanct sanctity of marriage and Filipino family. I'm thinking whether it is an encroaching invasion of child's innocence in the area of legislation. Is this a form of child abuse bill? Or you take away the parental custody from the parents? Number two, it is discriminatory to Article 14 of Education, Culture, and Arts, especially to science. It attacks, to, it attacks science. It attacks genetics and other natural sciences, like genetics, biology, genealogy. Number three, Discriminatory to preamble of the Philippine Constitution. It is an attack against Almighty God that the legal document itself is being mentioned. Article 2, Section 6, Article 3, Section 5, Article 14, Section 14, Section 3, Paragraph 3. Article 15, Section 3, Paragraph 1. Number 4, it is a discriminatory to the rule of law. Is this an attack to the Philippine Constitution? Is this bill an attack to the legislation and to the legislator? I'm thinking, if lawmaking and legislation is, is on the basis of emotion and feeling, not by reason, would this make this nation, a Republican nation, a nation with the rule of law? In other words, Whenever we talk about Republican or rule of law, we legislate law not on the basis of feelings and emotion. Pastor, Last could you kindly, yes sir, perfect timing po. Uh, is this a self-inflicting law? Yun lang po, maraming pong salamat. I'm sorry po, kailangan ko pong pumunta po ng Clark. I have to go. Maraming pong salamat for allowing IFP to speak. Salamat din po for speaking, uh, Pastor, and uh, safe uh, travel po.
Uh, now we'd like to hear from a, a Christian psychoanalyst from the CCFP. Yes, Dr. Lu Mandalupe. You have the floor, ma'am. Um, Filipinos for Life, yes. Um, good afternoon. I am Lu Mandalupe, a Christian counselor. And I have um, experiences dealing with um, people who had gender dysphoria. Um, it used to be called gender identity disorder from the DSM-3, which is the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorder. And it used to be um, considered a mental health uh, problem. Uh, but because of the uh, desire not to stigmatize the issue, it became uh, gender dysphoria. And as mentioned earlier, it is distress that a person feels because um, the genitalia that he was born with or she was born with is not what he wants or she wants. Um, so it's sex assigned at birth um, as different from what uh, this person now chooses or experiences to be. Um, it could be from so many reasons. Um, environment, the way they were nurtured, but definitely recent research sh say that there is no gay gene. Um, and there's no need for a heterogene because it's already declared with the genitalia that you are born with. So genes do not really matter anymore to declare whether you're a male or a female. So um, because it's distress, a person already feels that there's a lack of synchronicity with who he is or who she is. Um, so there's an internal problem to begin with, and it could be because of nurture. Um, it should be um, something that you learn how to be, who you find your identity from, your parents. It's the attachment theory that your mother nurturing you models to a female that she is a female. And a father models to his sons that he is a male. But something along the line, those um, have been kind of confused because um, so many reasons, and some of them are traumatic. In my own experience, some of them become um, LGBTQ because they were harassed, because they were um, sexually harassed by older LGBTQ. So Dr. Um, Mandalupe, please wrap the, up within a minute. The traumatization is the real issue. Um, we do not need more <laughs> laws for anti-discrimination because there are already laws that um, support human rights. Labeling LGBTQ as a separate law will only put a demarcation line that separates hetero and uh, LGBTQ when we're all human beings to begin with. So the problem is parenting, modeling, having a community that loves and accepts every human being, not just one or so group. So let's all build a community that raises children in the values that we should be passing on to them as good human beings. That's all. Thank you, Dr. Mandalupe. Uh, before I call attorney Lumanta, uh, a quick point from Dr. Mira, very quick point, and then we'll yes, proceed. Uh, thank you, Senator. I just want to reiterate na sana po wag natin gamitin yung science at saka psychology no, to misinform people. Um, dahil po yung DSM-3 ay, ay luma na pong version ng DSM at sa, sa current DSM po, hindi po nakalagay na abnormality or disorder ang pagiging lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, at dineklara din po ito doon sa, ano po, sa, I, sa ICD at, at sa WHO. At ang nag-iingat lang po kami dahil po maaari po kaming mawalan ng lisensya bilang mga psikolohista kung po mapakita na kami po ay nagbibigay ng impormasyon na hindi po naayon sa science o siyensa. Nag-iingat lang po talaga tayo dahil po... Uh, Alam po natin na ang science po ay based on research at ang, ang current research po uh, at, at mamaya po sasabihin po ng 
aming, aming kasama ang official statement po ng Psychological Association of the Philippines. Um, Salamat Thank po. you, Dr. Mira. May I just remind our dear resource persons all around the table, dahil nga sinet ko yung tone sa simula, so mga ayon tayong lahat, we will listen to each other. Let's talk one at a time, no? And then the chair will recognize kung sino yung magsasalita one at a time. Mm -hmm. Kaya tayo nag... We're spending the whole day because we want to hear each other. Madam so chair. now I will call from Madam Filipinos chair. for Life, Attorney Jan, Luen. Attorney Jan Luen Lumanta. You have the floor. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Senator Ontiveros and Senator Bina, Your Honors. I am uh, Attorney Jan Lumanta from Filipinos for Life, uh, whose members promote traditional Filipino family and cultural values and advance the culture of life and sanctity of marriage and family. We express, Your Honor, our grave concern over the various SOGI bills filed in Congress, particularly Senate Bills 159, 412, and 689, due to the following major reasons, Your Honor. While Section 2 on the Declaration of Policy of All the Bills cited United Nations Universal Declaration on Human Rights and other uh, conventions and covenants, there is no binding obligation on the part of the Philippines to pass any criminal law that penalizes those who would discriminate on the basis only of the SOGI. These covenants focus on human rights and not just LGBT rights. And human rights, Your Honor, are already very much protected by our own current laws, Your Honors. For example, Your Honor, if I would encounter a client with the same, uh, with the same predicament or problem as, as KJ, Your Honor, Probably, Your Honor, I would file a case for grave coercion under Article 286 of the Revised Penal Code. And for the benefit of the people present here, I would read Section 286. It says, the penalty of prison correctional and a fine not exceeding 6,000 pesos shall be imposed upon any person who, without any authority of law, shall by means of violence, threats, or intimidation prevent another from doing something not prohibited by law or compel him to do something against his will, whether it be right or wrong. And that, is, uh, that already covers the acts of the principal, Your Honor, uh, given the, the facts uh, given to us today, Your Honor. And there are other laws, Your Honor, depending on the, on the facts, Your Honor. And yes, Your Honor, we agree that human rights of our brethren from LGBTQI plus <laughs> must be respected and protected. And we are also aware, Your Honor, of the words of Pope Francis, who are we to judge? But the SOGI law, your honors, is a criminal law. It imposes penalty of fine and or imprisonment no maximum of 12 years. And as a, uh, uh, this law, we find it ambiguous and difficult to implement. And this is important, your honor, because in order for a penal law to be, uh, to be effective, it must be able to, one, identify properly those covered by the protection it offers, and two, it should be capable of being implemented by the police or judicial system in terms of evidence. Attorney, is please wrap up within one minute. Yes, Your Honor. In that case, Your Honor, uh, is this the case for Saugi law? We believe no, Your Honor, because sexual orientation and gender identity are highly subjected, subjective. There is no way for one to determine definitively and objectively the gender identity or sexual orientation of a person before him. And secondly, Your Honor, it is difficult to implement. Why? Because while it shall punish by fine and imprisonment those who would discriminate on the basis of SOGI, no one, even the courts, as stated in uh, Section 5I in relation to Section 4H of the Senate Bills 412, no one, even the courts, could compel or force any person to undertake any medical or psychological examination to determine the person's sexual identity. So what evidence will we present before the court to prevent, uh, to, to determine the sexual identity, Your Honor? To Attorney, if you could please also submit uh, the copy of your first yes, statement Honor, to the committee. Yes, Your Honor, our you. discussions are all here. We will submit, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Attorney Lumanta. Uh, Madam Chair, uh, yes, just Senator copy, Nancy. Kanina si Dr. Lu was raising her hand. In the interest of fairness, because when they were doing their statement, hindi naman sila kinontradict. Dito. So, but, you know, baka siguro we should allow her to answer or to reply. Dr. Liu, you have a minute. Um, 
as I was saying, um, it was in uh, the DSM-3 that it was said that it was uh, gender identity disorder, but it was augmented in the DSM-5 as gender dysphoria. But dysphoria is still a distress. It's an internal struggle of a person um, dealing with the, um, the difficulty of um, adjusting to his assigned at birth sex. So in a way, that woundedness um, will result into like um, perceiving all kinds of uh, things as discrimination also. And that should be the thing that should be healed. It's not uh, really passing a law that uh, is already stated in other laws like the Bill of Rights that would augment or heal that. But the reality that there should be more um, acceptance, more um, healthy boundaries, um, and psychotherapy um, to, uh, to adjust to your sense of well-being, your identity. It should not be imposed on other groups, but it should be a person's journey into maturity, emotional regulation, rather than imposing a bill that will now thrash or thwart other other rights also. So uh, I'm not saying it's a mental disorder because it has been already stated in the DSM-5 that it's not, but it's still a distressful um, condition that needs psychotherapy and healing. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mandalupe. Uh, now from, I'd like to call Pastor Stanley Clyde. Sorry, sir, nakatakip yung ano, Flores po ba? Yes. Uh, Jesus is Lord Church. You have the floor. I'll make it short uh, because I have only three minutes. Uh, I'll base my uh, s uh, speaking this afternoon from the interpolation of the Senate that was dated uh, 2017. Uh, the bottom line is to show to us the three things. Number one, uh, Soggy Bill, it threatens academic freedom. Number two, it imperils freedom of speech and religion. And number three, it puts into question uh, the foundation of our laws. Number one, let me state from uh, Senate interpolation, this is no longer just the plain text of the bill. This is the interpretation of the author of the bill, which is the ma ma our Madam Chair uh, spoken in 2017 with regards to the interpolations. Let me quote a senator asking a question. Will it be considered discrimination if a religious educational institution promote among its students its belief that same-sex relationship is a sin? And the answer of our Madam Chair was, yes, such actions would constitute acts of discrimination and promote stigma against the LGBT community. Teaching a child in an educational institution that homosexuality is a sin is an act of discrimination. If my child is a uh, grade three right now and he asked uh, the Christian school and if b uh, the soggy bill became a law, the school ha cannot determine or cannot say that sexual relationship is a sin. But based on the interpretation of the Bible in my side, in my part, I would like to respect everyone's religious opinion with regards to interpretation of the Bible. But if we interpret it in our own way and in, in general, then uh, we will do uh, an act of discrimination. Let me make this uh, short as well. For example, uh, another question that was raised during the interpolation is like that's the case in America. Will it be considered discrimination if a baker refuses to sell a cake with a same-sex couple figurine on the top? And the answer during that interpolation is this. Senator Antivero said, yes, it to deny access to products would be a discriminatory act punishable under the bill. And the bake shop owner's religious belief is not pertinent to the conduct, to the conduct of his business. In other words, the baker will be imprisoned if the couple will file a case. Ladies and gentlemen, the discrimination that I see here is in the discrimination on the side of the straight community. And therefore, there are others, uh, other interpolation questions that are said here. Uh, and I would like to, to read one of the last, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Will it, uh, may religious schools deny recognition to LGBT organization on the basis of their religious belief and their reli uh, right to religious freedom? And the answer was no. It is not what religion teaches that the, the people and beyond. And the last uh, that I would like to, to point out 
was uh, uh, about academic freedom. Will an all-female school, exclusive school for girls, be required to accept a man who identifies himself as a woman? And the answer is yes. Exclusive schools for boys or girls should allow transgender to be admitted. And all boys' school should allow trans men to be enrolled, while an exclusive girls' school should allow trans women in. This is Senate Journal, May 8, 2017, page 14, uh, 1402. Uh, we would like to, I would like to state all of this for the record that kanina nasabi na there is no discrimination in the part of the other people. We would like to honor the uh, ad advocates of Soggy Bill at the same time and respect them. But at the same time, we also call on, this is on record. This is on Senate record and it is very clear. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Thank you very much also, Pastor Flores. Now I'd like to call Mr. Anthony Roquel. You have the floor. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair. A lot has been said, and I've heard a lot. But for me, it's about my lifestyle that has been changed. Because for er or most of you, I was the former to net match of school book hall. Pero hindi na ganun kaganda. Okay? I was in bondage of my sexuality for 26 years of my life. If you'll rate to net macho as a homosexual, I'm worse of a kind. From 1 to 10, I was 11. I practiced homosexuality at the age of 6. Walang akong nakitang bakla, hindi ko alam kung anong bakla, but I was already practicing it. Why? Because I thought I was born bakla and will die one. Living a lifestyle of, of promiscuity and homosexuality was the worst part of my life. Ang sabi ko nga ho, kung masarap ang buhay ng isang bakla, bakit kailangan baguhin ni Tunet ang kanyang buhay? Hindi po naging kawawang bakla si Tunet. Nakilala po, kumita ng pera, nakukuha kung anong gusto niya, pero why? Because it is a very difficult life. I love the LGBTQ community, and I honor them. And I believe that they're so, kumagano, so mabait compared to my lifestyle before. Mas disente ho sila kaysa sa buhay ni Tunet Macho noon. Dahil I was not discriminated, why? Nang harana po ako ng pare na gwapo. Wala akong bumawal sa akin. Meron ako mga nilapitan na magsyota, a boyfriend, a girlfriend, binibigyan ko ng pamasahe yung girl para umuwi, para iwan sa akin yung boyfriend. Pero hindi po ako napigilan. Why? Because I really have this strong spirit before me. But when I learned the truth, the truth has set me free. And the truth is, wala hong pinanganak na bakla, walang pinanganak na tomboy. But there are reasons behind it. Nang nakita ko po kung may problema, may solusyon. Like in my case, the problem was an absentee father. I didn't have a relationship with my dad. At a very young age, five years old, they left us abroad to work abroad. Pero I didn't understand at a very young age, bakit ako kailangan iwan ng papa ko? Rejection for, came in, fear came in, so binuway ko po ang kasalan, ang, ang pagiging isang bakla. I have so many questions about being a boy or being a man, a young man, pero my dad wasn't around. But God, in his infinite goodness, I, I'm now 61, pero mukha lang po akong 60. Pero at the age of 40 years old, doon ko lamang po naramdaman at nasabi sa sarili ko, because my dad was sick, so I was assigned to take care of him. I, I woke up at the middle of the night na nakahimlay po ako sa braso ng tatay ko. And that was the only time I was 40 years old then. Doon ko lamang po nasabi sa sarili ko na mahal ko ang tatay ko at mahal ako ng tatay ko. My mom, Sir Anthony, could you please wrap up yes, in a minute? Thank I you. Will. My mom is supportive of me bilang misang bakla. I didn't hear anything from her. 
She loves me so much. Isa lang ang sinabi niya. During those 26 years of rock bottom lifestyle or, uh, as a homosexual, ang sinabi niya lang, anak, mag-ingat ka at baka magkasakit ka. When the AIDS came care, came, when the AIDS care came, I was afraid to die with AIDS. Dahil no, no, uh, nakakahiya, pandidirihan ka. Pero it didn't stop me for me to do the things I want to do. I entered into orgies, five men, six men a night. Pero up to a point, I tried holding on not to fall into it. Nagtagalo ako one month. Sabi ko, kung mamamatay ako, mamamatay ako ng may sarap. But when I learned the truth, at sabi ko nga, if there is another kind of life with that rock bottom lifestyle of a homosexual, that is the life I want. I don't know, even know, I haven't heard about being born again, but it started with a desire. A young desire, a very small desire that I want to change. I tried changing my life, but to no avail. But when I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, Jesus is the one who changed me for 28 years, living with freedom, with joy, and being a happy heterosexual man. Sa inyo pong lahat, salamat po, Madam Chair. Salamat din po, Sir Anthony. Uh, now I'd like to hear from Yeshua Layog. Yes, sir. You have the floor. Magandang magandang araw po. I would like to pay my respect to the senators and all the people here, including the pastors, uh, people from different faith and the LGBT community. Um, pasensya na po kayo. I am not prepared to actually give you an actual um, experience that I had, but I am a shofar blower. I was trained in Jerusalem by different rabbis, and they gave me a special gift, a vision. And what happened was, bago po mangyari ito, there were several other incidents that I'm going to share now. Would it be okay, mga kaibigan, if I do it? Okay. Yes, sir, if you could lang within three minutes. Yes, I will uh, proceed. I've already given this to your office as well. So, thank you, Paul. So I would like to express my deepest respect for your good office. I am a watchman, an intercessor of the IFP. I am a chauffeur blower. I'm trained by the Jewish rabbis in Israel, and I would I'd like to provide my vision that I saw last July 7, 2018. For the entire August of 2019, the ministers of the Lord have brought me to these establishments to pray and intercede and blow the shofar for the state of the nation and our current relation with China. During this time, po, I was able to blow inside the Chinese Embassy, the Bureau of Immigration, the China Aid, the West Philippine Sea, the Philippine Navy, the Philippine Marines, the Philippine Air Force, the Quezon City Memorial Circle, the Malacanang Palace Grounds, and the House of Representatives. So during the later part of August 27 to 29, I went to the Christ Living Stone Fellowship, and there we prayed and interceded. Little do I know that the actual issue that we have is the soggy bill. So on my part, I'm blowing for the Chinese relationships and the Filipinos were actually in a, um, let's just say, war, as they say. So it was the last time that I went to the House of Representatives, which was last August, February of 2019. I prayed there in the session hall and interceded for the 2019 election and declared that God-fearing representatives would be elected to produce godly laws in the lands. And thank God, we were actually answered. Sir so Yeshua, please, if you could wrap up with that. Yes, I will. Thank you. In that morning of August 28, the day when Congressman Eddie Villanueva was giving the privileged speech for the soggy bill, 
pinaalala po sa akin ng Lord ang actual visions that I had. And these are the three visions. I saw the vision that I was in the halls of the House of Representatives looking for a Congressman Villanueva. During that time, hindi pa po na-elect si Brother Eddie. At hindi ko po alam na siya. And I saw, on the second one, I saw that I was in a pool with a group of people and one of them was Anthony Roquel who is sitting beside me right now. At three days pa lang po kami nagkakasama. And the third one, as I was in the parking lot and I saw many military men going towards us and heard a blast of siren. And I look up in the sky and I saw several fighter jets coming towards us in a V formation. And they all started to explode and I woke up. That was the vision. So one and two happened. The third one, di pa nagaganap. And when I uh, recalled, the parking lot itself was actually the Congress or the House of Representatives. So bakit ko po sinasabi itong mga to? Sabi ko, Lord, what does it mean? May sinabi po ang Lord sa Leviticus 18.24, Do not defile yourself in any way of these, because this is how the nations that I am going to drive away out before you became defiled because of war. So Even the land was defiled, up. so I punished it for its sins. And then, Vaughn, I gave, uh, during that time, Vaughn, no, August 29, our beloved president, was in China negotiating our mineral rights with the West Philippine Sea, encouraging our Emperor Sea to consider na pagbigyan tayo or it's going to be war. Sir Yeshua, please, if you Thank could you wrap up. Thank you very up. much. I've already given these disseminations to your office. Maraming salamat po for your time. Maraming salamat din po. Uh, now I'd like to call Sir Greco Belhica. Magandang umaga po, ma'am. Sorry po. Meron na akong confession. Nung malito ako, inisip ko na magbakla kaya ako. Pero naisip ko, wag na lang. <clears throat> Dahil gaya ng tatay ko, naisip ko mas masarap pala maging lalaki at gusto ko rin maging siga. But going to this topic, There, the bill has a detach from a fact. The bill has a detach from facts, problems, and solutions. Problem presented is discrimination, meaning equal right under the law. Soggy solution is redefinition of what is male and female. The right solution is equal protection in law. We are strong because we are free. Our freedom is our most prized possession. We are who we are because of our God-given liberties our forefathers died for and our country and nation today continue to protect with our lives. It is because of truth, justice, and fairness that we are all allowed to ascertain that makes us a strong nation. Our freedom is what makes us a great nation. We speak more freely than any nation in the world. With the passage of this bill, shall our rights and freedom to speak be curtailed? The problem of discrimination is about equal protection in law, not to give preference to specific group of people, belief, or faith, and impose on others their own sets of beliefs and practices. As a free nation, we can live in unity with diversity. That is our strength and the evidence of our liberties. This is what separates us from other nations, from Muslim states, communist states, and godless states. We are free, and we speak freely. The Philippines is a Christian nation. We are 90% Christian. Sir Greco, could you please wrap up within a minute? In our constitution from 1898 to 1987, implores the aid of Almighty God. Expressed in our laws is our Christian faith, murder, libel, adultery. We are free because of these laws, beliefs, and way of life. We cannot, as a people, strengthen our freedom by changing our sexual gender, orientation, and identity. 
more so forced upon others by law to be like us and to live like us. These are the ideas that runs contrary to the very freedom our forefathers fought for. The laws we have makes, the laws we make, shall we leave to our children that shall define their destiny and the future of our nation. We are free because we are a Christian nation. Our Christian faith and teachings are embedded in the laws and our constitution. Is it right to throw all our history and future away by changing the very core of who we are as a people and as a nation? I have in my hand a proposed comprehensive anti-discrimination and equal protection bill that aims to finally eradicate discrimination not only against LGBT group but against all Filipinos whose rights are being violated. Thank you. Thank you, Sir Greco. Kindly submit a copy of the bill uh, to the committee, and uh, probably we will bring it to the attention of SP and the majority leader so that it can be uh, referred. Thank you uh, very much. Now I'd like to call from the Philippine Council for Evangelical Churches, Dr. Reverend Dr. Aldrin Penamora. You have the floor. Uh, good afternoon, Madam Chair, and to Senator Binay, and to all the respected uh, members of our group. Uh, yes, allow me to start from, uh, to read from a part of our paper, position paper of the Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches. Um, what, would, what should be the attitude of Christians, and I don't only think that Christians, but to all our Filipino citizens, should be toward LGBTQ? We have to acknowledge and repent of our prejudices toward the LGBTQ community, of our ignorance of their plight and struggles, and our contribution in their historical oppression. Members of the LGBTQ possess the same dignity as any person. All human beings are made in the image of God. The church should be a place of welcome for everyone, even if we do not know how to respond to all the questions being asked of us. We therefore encourage treating the LGBTQ community with respect and discourage name calling, labeling, and other forms of shaming. We must be compassionate and genuinely love the LGBTQ community as individuals and as a community for the LGBTQ is like any other person who, apart from Christ, is in a condition of deep loneliness hungering for true love. As Christians, we, like the prodigal son, who were once God's enemies and have now known only by grace God's abounding love, must show the LGBTQ what it means to be embraced by our Heavenly Father. None of us is therefore in any position to cast stones of condemnation toward them, they should be welcomed and loved, not shunned and rejected. We must minister to them in ways that God will call us to. Let us seek God's will in how we can journey with them, how we can be a good shepherd to them, demonstrating God's love and holiness in practical ways and on a consistent basis in the hope that they too will soon have through Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit life to the full. Now having said that, our position to the Saudi bill, we say yes to equality, equal rights for all. We support provisions of the Saudi bill that provide the LGBTQ community equal rights as upheld by our biblical Christian values and convictions on human dignity and equality for all, and which are also enshrined in our Philippine constitution. At the same time, we say no to discriminatory provisions of the bill, saying no to discrimination of religion in public life. We object to provisions of the Saudi bill that damage the sanctity of marriage and family, curtail freedom of speech and religion, and tend to give undue partiality to one sector over others. Let me just um, summarize, um, Madam Chair. Uh, saying yes to equal rights for all, we see and recognize without pretending to have complete understanding the difficult realities the LGBTQ among us are facing on a daily basis due to their sexual orientation and gender identity. 
For this reason, we acknowledge the importance of provi provisions in the Saudi bills that give substance to our Constitution's core value of equality for all. Such as, and we have enumerated it here, but of course, due to time constraint, we will just submit our paper. Uh, one, one core uh, provision is regarding the stigma. And we, we have a rejoinder saying, biblical Christian teachings in sexuality, gender, and marriage have developed out of a long historical process of community and ecclesial reflections and deliberations on the teachings of the Bible as God's written word. We evangelicals seek the common good and do not condone the misuse and misinterpretation of biblical teachings that may lead to devaluation and dehumanization of others. Pastor, please uh, wrap up within okay. one minute. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. At the same time, biblical teachings prefer a Christian orientation to knowledge that differ with other approaches to knowledge. This doesn't mean, however, that religious convictions, including Christian ones, are arbitrary. For this reason and purpose, we recommend the following statement be added to the definition of stigma. Stigma does not include religious teachings on sexuality, gender, and marriage. And to wrap up, finally, uh, why do we say no to discriminatory provisions? We just, I'd like to say this, that uh, while such provisions from the SOGI bill certainly promote the LGBTQ community's welfare by granting them much needed access to basic human rights and protecting them from discrimination on the basis of SOGI, it needs to be said nonetheless, with all due respect our honorable legislators who have authored and are supporting the SOGI bills and to our fellow citizens, especially members of the LGBTQ community advocating for their passage that we find crucial provisions on discriminatory practices and penalties very disconcerting, for they are inimical to the very value of democratic equality the Saudi bill seeks to oppose. Lastly, let me say that um, we, the Philippine Council of Evangelical Churches, sincerely hope and pray, and we are willing to be of assistance in any way we can, so we can have an anti-discrimination law that would emb um, embody faithfully the democratic principle of equality of rights, embracing the LGBTQ community together with other sectors of our beloved nation. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you also, uh, Reverend Dr. Penamora, and thank you also for the offer of assistance to the committee. And now, last but not the least, among our different uh, faith-based and religious groups today, uh, speaking for the Archdiocese of Manila, the Catholic Bishops Conference, oh, I'm so sorry, okay. For the okay, family and life, for the CBCP, yes, for the CBCP, including uh, Family and Life Office and the Office of Women. Oh, okay, <laughs> all right. No, I'm sorry, I stand corrected. Not the Archdiocese, but for the CBCP. So, uh, Ms. Fanny Tata, do you have the floor? Thank you, Senator Risa, Senator Binay. Good afternoon. I will actually be brief. The Catholic Church embraces all whatever is their orientation or gender identity. And the religious institutions provide the widest support system for those who have undergone or are undergoing depression and anxieties in relation to, their, to the issues we are discussing today. For the 87% of our Catholic population, which is around 95 million plus tax-paying population, there are Catholic doctrines which cover the issues we are discussing this afternoon or you are hearing this afternoon. I am not really sure that those organizations here that carry the Catholic label were faithfully following the doctrines of their faith. Our Constitution and our laws actually reflect and support Catholic doctrines and or are based on Catholic doctrine. We have great numbers of gays and lesbians who are outstanding, and they are outstanding because they have pursued perfection in their craft or areas of competence. And not just simply because of their sexual orientation or their gender identity. A lot of them we grew up with and had very close relations with them. 
and had never even thought that every gay, maiden different, or lesbian, or are lesser than what they are. Sometimes the gays have problems because of unacceptable behavior. I go around the country, and the gays and les lesbians I work with, because there are so many of them who do voluntary work uh, in terms of poverty and social development um, undertakings, and they have underscored the fact that like everyone else, what they need is access to good education for them to function productively in society. When this happens and they behave decently according to accepted norms of society, they don't have problems being like everyone else. I mean, we have friends here who have made their own representation and have gone through all the difficulties of going through the orientations that they've had. These are proofs that it is something that we can conquer. So I don't, I don't really know what laws can do to be able to cure. I know that there are already existing laws and uh, they reflect all the needs that we have in terms of human rights and discrimination. We have been discussing this in several hearings here regarding women, regarding poverty, regarding development. And I really don't know Senator Issa, how much more we can add to what is already existing. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Fanny. Uh, now let's hear about the effects of discrimination on the mental health and well-being of LGBTIQs uh, from our health professionals, no? those who haven't called earlier. So could we hear please first from Likhaan, Ms. Mina Tenorio, Likhaan Center for Women's Health. You have the floor. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you, Madam Senator, Madam Chair. Uh, I would like to read the position paper of Likaan Center for Women's Health. We are a, Likaan is an NGO, women's health NGO, uh, that works in urban poor communities, marginalized communities of women and young people. Anyways, so this is the position paper on Senate bills regarding SOGI-based discrimination. Likaan Center for Women's Health strongly supports the various legislative bills that prohibit discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity or expression. The principle of equality for all in claiming rights, freedoms, social opportunities, and benefits comprise the heart of these bills. LGBTQI persons should be recognized as equal members of society. It is unfortunate that in this century, this simple proposition of fairness and justice is still being opposed by some vocal holders of power. From a health perspective, we note that the Philippines subscribes to the international norm that, quote, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of a disease or infirmity, unquote. Soji-based discrimination from childhood and to adulthood inflicts harm on the body and mind. A lifetime of concealment, fear, social exclusion, ridicule, bullying, and harassment is a cruel punishment that should not be imposed on anyone. From a women's perspective, we note the similar consequences produce, uh, produced by pervasive discrimination. Sex and gender-based discrimination disempowers women and creates the environment that fuels abuse, violence, rapes, and other horrific crimes. Soji-based discrimination works the same way. Society's tolerance of discrimination allows other crimes to creep closer to reality or acceptability. Likaan is a diverse national NGO and network that includes LGBTQI, staff, volunteer, patients, beneficiaries, and members of community associations. We know firsthand how discrimination harms people physically, psychologically, and emotionally, and hinders their personal development and self-actualization. We support the following key provisions of Senate Bills 159, 412, and 689. One, the definition and prohibition of SOGI-based discrimination. Two, the inclusion of broad areas and institutions of society, both public and private, in the specific acts of prohibited discrimination. Three, the inclusion of many institutions as redress mechanisms for SBs 159 and 689. And fourth, the mandate to establish and maintain an environment 
free of discrimination through social protection, diversity programs, training, information, and education. We propose further refinements in these areas. One, SBs 159 and 689 have two-tier penalties that are very wide, from fines only from fines only to 12 years imprisonment, but the basis for penalty demarcations are not clear. It will help if the penalized discriminatory practices are written in increasing severity. It will also help if the elements to merit the higher tier penalty are clearly spelled out or as done as in SB 412, the higher tier penalty is eliminated altogether. Ms. Mina, Severe, if you could please wrap up in yeah. a minute and then also submit the paper to the yes, committee. Thank yes, you. Madam, Senate, Madam Chair. Severe punishments may not be an effective measure to change pervasive discriminatory mindsets and behavior. Stronger positive measures such as diversity programs, models of social inclusion and education and information may be the better routes to take. We recommend changes in these areas. SB 412, Discriminatory Practices, Section 4K. Quote, um, I won't read that anymore. The, uh, engaging in part, sige, I'll read it na lang. En engaging in we public speech minute, except please. religious speech and comments made in the context of a religious service, ceremony, or activity meant to shame, insult, vilify, and incite or normalize the commission of discriminatory practices against LGBTs, unquote. The exception for religious speech should be removed. If a speech, religious or otherwise, is meant to shame, insult, vilify, and incite or normalize discrimination, then it is discriminatory practice. Religious leaders can still make their arguments ag against homosexuality, provided they do so in a manner not meant to shame, insult, and vilify. Some religious leaders have in fact done so by emphasizing their love for and ministry to LGBTs or carefully delineating their ideas of sins and sinners. Finally, we would like to point out uh, should, speech should be protected as it is part of our rights and freedoms. However, we generally have and accept reasonable limitations such as avoiding imminent danger or harm. Finally, we would like to point out that eliminating soji-based discrimination will promote social strength and cohesion. Society will benefit. Eliminating discrimination is not a zero-sum game. Nobody will suffer if others gain equality. Objectors will probably have to stop the discriminatory practices they have been used to. But in the end, even they will benefit from a more fair and just society. Thank you, Ms. Madam Chair. Thank you, Ms. Mina. Uh, let's hear now from Dr. R.J. Valdez. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. I'm here to, as a representative of the Philippine Psychiatric Association. But what I'm going to tell you is my own opinion, okay? Not of the consensus of the Psychiatric Association. Okay. So according to Kaplan and Sadak's Synopsis of Psychiatry, 11th edition, sexuality has always been an interest to the medical community. During the Victorian era, Sexologists such as Havelock Ellis and Richard Von Kraft Ebbing presented diverging perspectives on sexual behavior. During the same time, Sigmund Freud developed his innovative theories on libido, childhood sexuality, and the effects of sexual impulse on human behavior. Sexuality is determined by anatomy, physiology, and the culture in which a person lives relationships with others and developmental experiences throughout the life cycle. It includes the perception of being male or female and private thoughts and fantasies as well as behavior. In 1973, homosexuality was eliminated as a diagnostic category by the American Psychiatric Association or APA and in 1980, it was removed from the DSM. And the ICD-10 states, Sexual orientation alone is not to be regarded as a disorder. This change reflects a change in the understanding of homosexuality, which is now considered to occur with some regularity as a variant of human sexuality, not as a pathological disorder. As David Hawkins wrote, the presence of homosexuality 
does not appear to be a matter of choice. The expression of it is a matter of choice. Freud did not consider homosexuality a mental illness. In the three essays on theory of sexuality, he wrote that homosexuality is found in persons who exhibit no other serious deviations from normal whose efficiency is unimpaired and who are indeed distinguished by especially high intellectual development and ethical culture. In, letter to, in, in the letter to an American mother, he wrote, homosexuality is assuredly no advantage, but it is nothing to be ashamed of, no vice, no degradation, it cannot be classified as an illness. We consider it to be a variation of the sexual functions. Now going to the SOGI bills that were presented by Senators Ontiveros, Marcos, and Pangilinan. Yes, it is true that we Filipinos are just tolerant of the LGBT community. Harassments done against the LGBT community is not likely be to, to be reported because of fear that the LGBT individual will be blamed instead, in, instead of the real perpetrator. Dr. RJ, could you kindly wrap up within a minute and then please submit the paper as well yes. to the committee. Thank you. So, in the, um, so do you still remember what happened in 2017 when a gender queer was hired as a transcriber by a famous company? This company said that they were not willing to accept LGBTQ members in their office and that they cited that they were not ready to accept the LGBTQ culture. If we had the SOGI bill that time, then that company would have been penalized. Then what is the effect of discrimination to an individual? Again, according to the APA in Stress in America, the impact of discrimination, regardless of the cause, experiencing discrimination is associated with higher reports, reported stress and poorer reported health. The APA also said a wealth of psychological research shows that discrimination can exacerbate stress. Moreover, discrimination-related stress is linked to mental, mental health issues such as anxiety and depression. Imagine if such discrimination happens to your relative. Dr. RJ, so could you submit the rest of the paper to the yes, committee? Sorry, last paragraph. Hence, in my own opinion, having a SOGI bill or an anti-discrimination act in our country will create a safe and equal environment regardless of their sexual orientation and gender identification or expression. May I also say that the Anti-Discrimination Act is not only for the LGBT plus community, but can also be applied to non-LGBT individuals. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. RJ. And uh, last but not the least, from our health professionals, uh, with the PAP statement as well, uh, let's hear from Dr. Yeng Gachalian. Uh, magandang hapon ho sa inyong lahat. Magandang hapon po, madang share. And uh, I'm here as a representative of the Psychological Association, LGBT Special Interest Group. Unang-unang po sa lahat, gusto ko lang dinawin yung dysphoria. Dahil mukhang dito kanina, medyo dumabu yung dating natin, ano. And allow me also to read a portion of the statement of the LGBT SIG. Gender dysphoria involves clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, and other important areas of functioning. Transgendered people do not necessarily experience clinically significant distress in their desire to transition to the other gender. While many transgendered people do experience distress, it is mostly from societal stigma, prejudice, and discrimination. Decades of scientific research have led mental health professional organizations worldwide, including the American Psychiatric Association, American Psychological Association, and other international associations as well, um, to conclude that being lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgendered are normal variants of human sexuality and identity. The language of DSM-5 and ICD reflect this conclusion and should not be used to misinform the public or to justify discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation, gender identity, and gender expression. With this, um, I would like to uh, stress a portion also of the PAP Code of Ethics on why we are doing this. Um, we are very clear in our stance 
against discrimination and we are calling upon Filipino well, uh, mental health professionals to recognize the unique worth and inherent dignity of all human beings and to respect the diversity among persons and people. This means that uh, we should not discriminate against or demean persons based on actual or perceived differences in characteristics, including gender identity and social uh, gender orientation. So in order to uh, eliminate this, we would like to stress that we support the passage of legislate, legislation at the local and national levels that protect the rights and promote the welfare of people of all sexual orientation and gender identities. Also, um, to disseminate and apply accurate and evidence-based information about sexual orientation and gender identity and expression to design interventions that foster mental health and well-being of LGBTQ Filipinos. And this is exactly what we're doing now. That we are disseminating um, this information that uh, there is nothing abnormal about our LGBTQ friends. And with that also, of all the experiences that were uh, shared with us, um, nanay po ako, nararamdaman namin yung nararamdaman ninyo. Ako po ay may asawa at may anak. Um, pero ang sinasabi ko kasi natin dito, hindi tayo pare-pareho na nai-experience sa buhay natin. So kung ano man ho yung dahilan kung bakit may mga tao na bumalik o nagbago ng kanilang kasarian, ayan po ay um, nasa tao, hindi ho ito, it cannot, it cannot be a representative of all LGBTQ individuals. And so by the virtue of their um, identity, we the PAP LGBT Special Interest Group affirms that trans women are women, that trans men are men, and that all human beings, including transgendered individuals, deserve to live with dignity and respect for their rights and well-being. We support the SOGI Equality Bill as a means to uphold the rights of Filipinos of diverse sexual orientation, gender identities, and gender expression. Maraming po salamat. Salamat din po, Dr. Gachalian. Let's move to the uh, other women's groups who haven't spoken. Talagang tig three minutes na lang po subukan natin dahil malilate na rin po ako sa session and we still would like to hear from uh, our government agencies na hindi nakapagsalita last time who may want to uh, add something. From the PCW, sino pong magsasalita? Si Ms. Kalin ba o si Ms. Aurora? Good. Uh, uh, Ms. Kalin yes, Sasuman, you have the floor. Yes, uh, good afternoon, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Senator Risa Honteveros, and uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the PCW strongly supports the legislative measures prohibiting discrimination on the basis of sexual orientation and gender identity and expression. We recognize the persons with diverse SOGI experience discrimination in various forms and degrees. It is about time that respect for all regardless of SOGI be ingrained.